706, and uh, a quorum being present of the City Services Committee of the City Council, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. So if folks, I don't, there's a one or two seats still available. Um, we could pull some around. Um, but there is a sign-up sheet that's at the podium. I still have the first sheet right here. So um, I'm going to give it another minute or so for anybody who's here to go ahead and put their names on the next sheet. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Is that OK? All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a question, which is I think there will be some coming from a meeting, the Sanctuary in the Streets meeting, who will be coming around eight. And I know last time we had given an opportunity for anyone to have a chance to sign up. Is that how it always works, or no, well, something we could ask for? Because this is a substitute. Okay. So it's a point the problem that Okay. And that would interrupt the business. No, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so as I said, um, we are beginning this meeting of the city, Committee on City Services and the Northampton City Council, and I say that because we have members of the entire body that would make up the full quorum of the City Council, um, so it needs to be posted as such. If folks would... Um, Please just take a moment, I'd like to uh, take a moment of silence for the uh, victims in Las Vegas. Thank you. So um, what we typically do in our subcommittee meetings and our usual meetings is we open them with an announcement that the meeting is uh, being video and audio recorded, and announced that there is a uh, quorum present. I'll uh, al allow uh, counselors to introduce themselves. I'm Ryan O'Donnell, counselor at large. I'm Dennis Bidwell, board two city councilor. I'm city councilor Mary Ann LaBarge, vice chair. And Maureen Carney, uh, counselor from ward one and chair of this committee. Um, so we have an agenda. And um, it's, uh, there's a lot of, um, I think a lot of people are present for a couple of items on the agenda. So um, what we'll do is, of course, we'll have public comment to start. And you're welcome to address any of the items on the agenda, those um, items that were referred to our committee at the last city council meeting. Um, the proposed resolution and the proposed ordinance. We also have appointments that you may be here to address, but um, you can, if you hear that someone has already addressed um, your concerns uh, and you don't, and you see that there are a number of people present, um, don't feel compelled that you need to repeat the same things, but please take the time to enumerate additional concerns or uh, comments that you might have on the matter. Um, I think uh, with that being said, we have three minutes, and I'll, uh, for lack, we don't really have a secretary. In fact, I think before we start public comment, I'll ask my colleagues, is there someone who would agree to take notes for tonight? Yeah, I think that. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be extensive minutes because we have the video recording and we have We'll be getting some assistance. Thank you. I think people give their names and addresses for the record. Yes, and I'll ask that then. So, are there are agendas it, available somewhere? Um, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't have copies of the agenda, but I can tell you because it's. Um, does anyone else have a copy that they can show to Carolyn? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. So, I think what we'll do is we'll go through the list. Um, and then if there's anybody else who hasn't had a chance to put the name on the list, we'll ask you three minutes is what we'll stick to just because there are so many people here and we need to get to the items on the agenda. So I will go ahead and start with Blair Gim. <coughs> Um, my name is Blair Jemma, and I live at 
Park Avenue. Um, I'm against uh, the proposed plan for surveillance cameras. I think it's uh, an invasive attempt to criminalize Northampton. And I'd particularly like to respond um, to the council members here regarding the committee last week. Um, there were statements made by council members about the fact that they were receiving phone calls from people who were too intimidated and afraid to stand uh, for the surveillance cameras. And the reason I like to bring this up is because I think um, hearing you say that, it's, it's obvious that you're beginning to perpetuate what these cameras are trying to do, which is to criminalize Northampton. Um, to say that the room last week that attacked full of people against cameras um, was intimidating and that people uh, were afraid of us, um, I'm particularly offended by that. Um, and, you know, I think if the room had been packed with business owners that said they were against cameras, I think you might not have sent this to uh, a committee. Um, but if business owners are concerned about boycotts, they should be. Um, because if they don't start speaking out against the cameras, um, we will organize boycotts. Uh, the majority of people in this town are not business owners and are not police chiefs. And we hold power. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, just uh, some, uh, a couple of counselors have asked me to ask if folks could refrain from applause during during the um, presentations. It's a little distracting, and for some, it might be hard. So, um, if we could do that, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Next person I have is Dana Goldblatt. Again, your name and address. Uh, Dana Goldblatt, and my address is 140 William Street in Northampton. And uh, I'm, I came here to speak out in enthusiastic support of the resolution. I think it's so important, and I'm so grateful that our city council uh, took this step to, and took this action. And I ex especially wanted to uh, express my support for the sentence that says that we have a right not to be constantly surveyed. And I think in terms of a resolution, that that's a really, really important right for us to say that we have. And there was some misunderstanding, I think, about what it means to have a right uh, that was expressed at the last council meeting, and I wanted to address that. Because uh, in a case, the, the judicial branch of the government, the SJC, had said that there's not currently a law that says that. Currently, there's no law that says that we don't have, that we have a right to be to not be surveyed in a, in a public space. And that is a wide open space for the legislature, to check, the legislature to step in and say, that's a right that's not being protected by a law. The SJC's found that there's no law that protects that. We have to make a law to protect that. I feel that I have a right to health care. And if it doesn't exist in a law, the legislature is supposed to step in and pass a law that protects my right to health care. I feel I have a right to a living wage. And if that's not happening and there's no law that exists, it's the role of the legislature to step in and pass a law that makes that happen. And I feel that I have a right not to be constantly surveyed in the public space. And if that law doesn't exist yet, then it's incumbent on my legislature to step in and pass that law. And it begins with the resolution that says, this is a right. This is a real human right that exists. We don't look to the judiciary to tell us what human rights are. We look to the judiciary to tell us what laws have already been passed and what the Constitution says. We look to the legislature to pass new laws to protect rights that aren't being protected. And that's what I feel is happening, and that's why I think that rights language is so important. I was also just very disturbed at the idea that a legislature would say, well, since that right doesn't exist, we can't do anything. There was a sense that if the, if the law doesn't exist, then the legislature shouldn't write it because, well, it doesn't exist, and therefore it would be wrong to make a law that says the right does exist. And that, to me, erases the role of the legislature. We have three branches of government in, uh, in the US, in Massachusetts, and even in Northampton. And they are the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. If we lose the legislative, if we erase them out of existence, if we say, well, if the law is not already there, we shouldn't do anything about it, then we just really have the police and the legislature. 
And when you lose a branch of government, when, when a branch of government gets eaten by the police, that's a police state. Even if the police are nice, that's a police state. So thank you for enforcing our rights. Thank you. Uh, the next person on the list. Oh, sorry about that, folks. I see uh, Gregory Goff. And your name and address, please. Gregory Goff, 140 William Street. Uh, I also support this resolution. Uh, I understand that surveillance is a, a, a topic that is coming up more and more. And while I also uh, agree with everything that Dana said about uh, the legislator being what is supposed to be protecting our rights, that, and that not just because uh, the law exists, if the law doesn't exist, we need to create one. I also want to talk a little bit about uh, one of my fears, which is how this would be used. I didn't understand until recently that there's a big difference between uh, a homeowner like myself who has security cameras or a, a, another uh, person who owns a business who might have security cameras that are their personal property versus how cameras that are city property uh, can be used. And by that, what I mean is, uh, from my understanding, it takes a warrant for police or FBI or federal agents to ask me for my footage. It does not take a warrant for them to ask for the footage from any municipality. And that's a big deal to me. No matter if it's kept for an hour, or two days, or 30, or three weeks. The idea that if I'm a government agent, I can say Northampton has footage, they erase it after 24 hours, let's say, a really short time. So I'm going to be asking them on a particular schedule to get all of their footage. And they can do that at any time without a warrant for any reason. And from my understanding, there's no way to say no to that. And it doesn't matter if we have facial recognition or if there are other enhancing techniques that Northampton police don't have. Once you have the raw footage, if it's digital, which this would be, once it goes to any other entity, they can use that footage and put anything they want on it. They can use their facial recognition. They can use their enhancement techniques. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, far and above what should be happening to keep property safe, people safe. If people want it for their own businesses, I, I'm all for that. Because it <coughs> takes that extra step of a warrant to get that. But putting it out in the public where anyone can get it for any reason, I feel is uh, much, much more dangerous and absolutely against my right as a citizen not to be surveilled. Thank you. Thank you. And the next person is Carolyn Oppenheim. I'm Carolyn Oppenheim, Three Montview Avenue, I believe. Um, I'm speaking in favor of the resolution opposing the installation of the surveillance cameras. I, I'm old enough that I remember growing up under McCarthyism, where people who dissented were under constant surveillance. And it was a terrifying time. And it wasn't just if you were pro-Russian, you could be pro-Union. I mean, what's frightening about the growth of unfettered surveillance is that it really does shut down public discussion and debate. And I just happened to be watching Anthony Bourdain last night, and he was in Singapore. And he was having a lengthy discussion with young millennials. Singapore is one of the most surveilled places in the world, and they have security cameras everywhere. And they also <coughs> have no poverty and multicultural, but there's a trade-off. And um, I worry about the growth of surveillance. You know, small steps for practical reasons might make sense, but things grow incrementally. And we used to have, when I was young, um, a much clearer demarcation. Before Ronald Reagan in this country, we had a much clearer idea 
of the public sector and the private sector. And then with economics came public-private partnerships. And then there was a fuzzing of the boundary of what is public and what is private, and what is the role of the public sector. And there are lots of reasons why that happened. But I think we're going to lose, frankly, democracy if the public sector gets eroded for reasons of efficiency. And, you know, the term best practices terrifies me because it's a corporate term. And it means best practices towards one end, whose goals? Um, I think our goals are to keep Northampton as safe a community as possible, but not giving away our strong sense of being a democratic community where people feel free to peaceably assembly and assemble and register the views. And this will be an enormous chilling effect. And there are other reasons. I, I just think keeping it keeping the public sector in the public space something we gotta educate more about is vitally important. So I support that resolution. Thank you. <coughs> Today, uh, pardon me for um, a hard time reading this, but I believe it's Brelton? Brecton. Brenton? Brecton. Oh, Brecton. Pardon me. It's okay. Brecton, could you say your name and address? My name is Brecton Jurgis. I live on Park Street, and I am speaking on behalf of a friend because they feel unsafe speaking. Uh, in the wake of the shooting in Las Vegas last night, I'm going to open my statement with a quote from a comrade of mine. Please speak, speak up. Speak louder. Yep. People sure. in the back. <coughs> what keeps us safe in is healthy communities. These are communities that have housing, health care, positive jobs, quality education, and as little oppression as possible. More policing creates distrust in communities, and this can lead to an increased reliance on police to solve our problems. End quote. I would like to point out something I was curious about before I attended a Chief Casper's meeting on surveillance cameras. The title of this event was an invitation to join us for a community discussion on surveillance cameras in the downtown area. The first question that came to my mind was, will Chief Casper be showing up in clean clothes or will she show up in her uniform with her gun? The answer was of course the latter. That is not conducted to a peaceful conversation mm -hmm. about surveillance cameras. Mm -hmm. This, be this behavior is also present in the MPD's monthly Coffee of the Cop meetings, in which mm -hmm. the MPD states, we hope that this program will help strengthen the relationship between the police and our community members by creating an avenue for open dialogue. Let me restate the facts here. Officers who are part of this program show up to these communities, to these community meetings aren't. Why? In the past, I've been proud of my city for being forward-thinking and inclusive, but this is now changing. And with the goal of returning to a forward-thinking community in mind, I have some questions for the committee. Where is your endpoint in allowing the Northampton Police Department to militarize and control our city? Do you draw the line of cameras, riot gear, assault rifles, armored vehicles, at grenade launchers? That is where other cities in this country have already headed. And they have headed this way because city government keeps saying yes. If you do not have an endpoint into what equipment we will allow our police to have, I find that extremely concerning. Just as I find it concerning that community discussions about our police officers involve one party bringing weapons, we have normalized this behavior. Instead, what would be forward thinking and uphold the values of the city would to begin disarming our police, to stop funding projects that take away basic human rights, and to aid the police in assaulting, arresting, and criminalizing our communities of color, those who are houseless, and those who are substance users. Please also don't forget that on the list of positive impacts of surveillance cameras, the MPD listed monitoring large events such as the Pride Parade. <coughs> I laughed when I read that. As many of us may know, Pride events take place all around the world to celebrate the success of the Stonewall Rebellion against police brutality. Mm -hmm. I hope you catch my point here, as we are moments away from another one. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if mind people that we have, we don't have any microphone here, so if you could uh, speak up, then folks <coughs> will we'll be able to hear you here, and also folks in the back will be able to hear you. Um, Amy Bookbinder. Hello, again. 
Um, I don't know if you're going to start the clock yet, but I want to say before I'll I... wait until you say oh, your name and address. Amy yeah. Bookbinder, Grove Avenue. And something else you wanted to say? I want to say, say something really quick, which is that um, I made a mistake when I spoke last week and I was talking about um, the police data and who is included and who is excluded. And Jody very res most respectfully corrected me and said, blacks are not excluded, they are in the data. So I don't like to be wrong, but I want to correct that. Okay? Can I start the clock now? You can start. Oh. <laughs> so I spoke about the plan for cameras last week, and I don't want to repeat myself except to remind you of my concern, my main concern, which is that the tapes will be except or may be accessible to federal agencies such as FBI and ICE. And that, I believe, is in complete contradiction to Northampton as a sanctuary city. And secondly, uh, I spoke about depriving everyone, especially our already marginalized, of their privacy and other rights. So tonight I'm going to mention a couple of others. <coughs> First, from the start, it seemed fishy to me that the police would put cameras outside on the street to catch shoplifters inside the stores where they can't see shoplifters. Well, now it makes sense to me because as I've learned from speaking with many people, including several business owners, this isn't really about shoplifting at all. It's about panhandlers um, who who many business owners blame for their loss of profits. This all started, as far as I know, and again, if I'm wrong about anything here, please, I will stand corrected. But what I understood from what the chief said, this started with a meeting between the Chamber of Commerce, the police, and maybe the mayor, I wasn't clear on that, where uh, the idea of cameras uh, was first brought up to deal with the problem of panhandling. Why not just be clear if that's the issue, hand handlers? Because that's been tried twice in this city and failed, mm -hmm. with legal objections to the bid and its attempted ordinance to make hand handling illegal and to public outcry. And guess what happened? The bid is gone. The second attempt, getting rid of the benches, also gone because of the public outcry. So here comes a new, what I believe, a veiled attempt to stop panhandling uh, without saying so. And I find this really downright devious and disgusting, mm -hmm. if true. And this brings me to my final point. I again thank you, counselors, for the resolution and the ordinance. And as, as in the past, uh, you also spoke out for us with the vibrant sidewalks ordinance, which this new plan, I believe, will uh, undo. And I think it's time, um, I'm gonna wind up, I think it's time for us all to support our city council, which we elected to represent us in a city in which I believe the Chamber of Commerce, the Mayor's Office, and the Police Department, since we've gotten a new charter, essentially have too much power. And that, this whole camera thing is, it, it, it exemplifies that. And finally, I want to support and thank the counselors who came up with the, with the ordinance and the resolution. And it's a trying time for all of us, but I don't think the solution is, uh, that this solution is the right one with cameras. It's not right and it's not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Peretti, Romani. I am actually a resident of Holyoke, Appleton Street. Could you just repeat your name? I may have mispronounced. Elizabeth Peretti Ramirez. But I've lived and worked in Northampton um, off and on for the last many years. Um, and I'm looking to buy a house. And Northampton is definitely one of the cities that I have on my list. Um, so I'm here to speak from a little bit of an outsider perspective, but also having lived here, I have an insider perspective as well. So um, one of the questions is, for me is, um, is Northampton unsafe? 
So Northampton right now for me is a city that I come to to go shopping, to do um, entertainment, go to bars or things like that, concerts. Um, and I've never heard anybody talking about, oh, I'm not going to Northampton because it's unsafe. But I have heard people say, I won't go to Northampton if there are surveillance cameras. And I am one of those people because I have a choice of where I live to go in many different towns. I have choices of places where I live. I don't want to live or shop or entertain in a town that has surveillance cameras all over the place. Part of that is because I used to live in mainland China where there are cameras all over the place. Mm. And when I lived there, I um, frequently found myself not having conversations I wanted to have mm. or um, avoiding places, even though my purse was always safe, which was awesome. Um, that wasn't worth it to me, to be constantly surveilled. I did not enjoy that. I did not want to live or shop or entertain in a place that has cameras. Um, I believe that since 9-11, we are like frogs in the water that is being boiled. And slowly, little by little, our civil liberties are being taken away, our privacy is being taken away, and it happens just in little increments, and pretty soon the water is going to be boiling. I think we have to say no to these cameras. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Chris Kitzler. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Chris Kitzler. I live at 65 South Street here in North Hampton. I'm here to speak in favor of the resolution against the surveillance cameras. Um, uh, when subjects like this come up, it's something I strive to remember remind myself that um, there isn't an us versus them between the police and the citizens um, or between citizens and government. That government and policing are things that we do to ourselves. A little louder. So. Sure. <clears throat> um, that we get to choose the way in which we are um, policed and governed is one of our wonderful rights of being in this country. Um, but on this particular issue, um, I have a number of objections um, against the cameras. And so, um, firstly, as other people have commented, the crime levels in the city are not high enough to warrant the degradation of our liberties and freedoms that these cameras would bring. Um, cameras themselves don't increase safety. They can provide some evidence post-fact, but uh, they're certainly not going to intervene on my behalf. Um, Additionally, the amount of money being requested for these cameras is far too high for the crimes that they're purported to help suppress. Um, if there's 100 incidents yearly of shoplifting, but we're going to spend $100,000 on cameras, then every one of those shoplifting events better be diamond rings from Silver Skate. But they're not. <laughs> um, this project doesn't have any sustainable funding. Um, it's an outlay, it's a capital outlay for equipment, but it doesn't contain funding for training nor maintenance. Mm -hmm. One of the other reasons cited for this project was uh, traffic accidents. Certainly cameras aren't going to make anybody safer from traffic accidents. Additionally, the traffic accidents on Main Street are not head scratchers. We don't need surveillance footage to figure out that somebody got rear-ended while backing out of a parking space. Um, also, and mostly the, uh, the most important part is that this is money that we could use to support people who are most in need rather than criminalizing them. Um, we can spend this money so much better um, than on surveillance cameras. Uh, I urge the city council to prohibit cameras from being installed and urge the police department to not install them. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and next is Paige Henry Wagner. Hi, my name is Paige Henry Wagner. I live at 61 Clark Ave, and I just want to speak in support of the resolution and against these cameras um, and echo everything that everyone else has said in support of the resolution against these cameras. It's a terrible idea. Um, I have talked to many people who could not be here tonight who um, who are very uncomfortable with this idea of why they need this, uh, makes them very uncomfortable. They don't want to be, like, don't want to be shopping and living and opening in a town that is doing this. It undercuts 
our ability to be a sanctuary city. It's that on every level. Um, thank you for your work to help us out this. Thank you. Elizabeth Humphrey. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Humphrey, and I live at 293 Prospect Street in Northampton. Um, I want to start by thanking the council um, for creating this really, uh, this resolution. And I am all for the resolution, and I am, I don't think I have words to express how strongly I am against the surveillance cameras. Um, I don't believe that I will feel safer. I will actually feel less safe. Um, my experiences have um, been both good and bad interacting with the police, and that was not me committing any crimes uh, or other than a traffic violation. Um, I have had some pretty horrible experiences, actually, that um, of almost bullying, and I felt very unsafe with the policemen, and I wish that I could have called the fire department instead of the police when I feel unsafe. Um, I don't want to go into those experiences right now because it would just be a waste of time, but I just want to ditto pretty much every single thing that has been said tonight um, and reiterate um, the undermining of our civil liberties and our freedoms and the democracy and the spirit of what I thought Northampton wanted to keep as a community. Um, thank you very much. Please know that I'm just very, very against um, laying a footprint for bigger and worse things um, that would invade our privacy and civil liberties. And excuse me, I'm very nervous, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Nancy Cohen. Hi, thank you for doing this. I truly appreciate it. I would hope that people Hi, Nancy, would, could you say your address? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Nancy Cowan. I live in Belchertown now, but I consider myself a Northamptonite. I couldn't afford to stay here, otherwise I would be here. Um, <laughs> I would hope that people could listen to one another with respect, because it's a more complex issue than this. It, the problems that I see are, are not panhandling. I, I should tell you, I own the shop in town here, and I'm be the first one to tell you the problem isn't panhandling. Panhandling is a protected right. Nobody's against people asking for money. The problem is the aggressive behavior that we see on the street on an almost daily basis. That's the problem, and it's been building, and, and it has had an effect on business, serious effect on a lot of our small businesses that make this place special. And if they go out, you can imagine what's going to come in. But anyway, it's a complicated issue because of behavior, not because people are asking for money, but because there is aggression on the street, not because there's a ukulele, but because somebody gets a knife to a throat, or somebody loses sight in an eye, or a couple of days ago, uh, there was a fight that was so bad, a woman was in tears in our shop. She was afraid it was going to come to guns and knives, and she had to text her daughter, who was in the shop, pinch next door, and tell her not to come out on the street. This problem has been building over a number of years, and that has never been addressed. So that's where I see, and I'd like that to be addressed. So I would hope that the council would not take any rapid action on this, but let the cameras are one possible thing that some people had thought of as a, as a partial solution to this. Okay, that's fine. There are others, too, which haven't been considered yet. I think we should take a look at a lot of solutions to address this because it's having an, a very deleterious effect on our downtown's kind of behavior. So I would ask you, don't close the discussion, don't close the whole resolution and ordinance thing. Let's look at the bigger picture here. Let's help these small businesses to survive. <laughs> Most of them are women-owned. Many of them are hanging by a thread. They won't tell you this. This is what the retailers don't want you to know because everybody wants to have a good face on it. 
but many of our favorite shops are in danger of going under because the business has been declining so rapidly because customers come to town and see a lot of this behavior and they say they won't come back and they tell their friends not to come back. That woman who was in tears has a Facebook group just like we all do. And is she coming back? Probably not. Lenny tried to comfort me. I'd also wanted to let you know this, that we care about the people on the street. I know them. They know me. You can ask them. We help them. We give them food. I won't give them money because I want them to live, you know, but I will bandage them when they get hurt. I will give them food if they need food. We're all like that out there. And so the idea that we're a bunch of greedy people who don't want other people to ask for money is simply false, and that's not a good way to frame this question. Let's look at the behavior and see what we can do so everybody can be comfortable on the street. Thank you. Uh, Jay Pavarai. I'm sorry, Pavarai? No, it's all good. Um, yeah, Pavarai. Pavarai, thank you. I'm Jay Pavarai. I live at uh, 9 Glendale Avenue in Northampton. Um, and I just, I want to, I'm here to speak in support of the resolution to oppose the installation of surveillance cameras throughout downtown Northampton. I, uh, I most recently I came from and lived in New York City. I moved to Northampton last summer. And I say that because um, that's a place where very highly militarized, uh, a very highly militarized police department um, takes control of communities in order to uh, police and uh, degrade the lives of very certain um, people who, who occupy very certain people of color, homeless people, um, and disabled people. Um, and I understand that that like, runs through all of policing, the concept of the structure of the police. And I understand that that attitude of protecting property runs through all of America. Uh, I'm interested to show up in Northampton and have the first thing that I sort of see being discussed um, in, in the city council be uh, something that's going to move to um, make the police department a high-tech militarized uh, police department. So I'm not comparing apples to oranges. I'm just trying to say that I believe that high-tech militarized policing is high-tech militarized policing no matter where it is. Um, I echo the questions about where um, where you draw the line if you start to give police equipment um, in this direction. And I heard last meeting a number of people suggest that uh, that outfitting of police with like heavier weaponry and things like that is already happening in, in Northampton. So um, I'm just here to speak uh, in support of the resolution and to thank y'all for um, moving towards putting something on the books against this um, proposed plan. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Alexis. Alexis Polakoff. Hi, I'm Alexis Polakoff. I the 65 Taylor Hill. Um, it's in Sunderland, but I plan on moving to Northampton when I can earn more than a stipend. Um, I am here to speak my voice <laughs> and say that I am in support of the resolution that uh, sent, you know, is against the ordinance for more surveillance in Northampton. Um, I think that's a not even a band-aid approach to the larger issues at hand. Um, if you truly want to, you know, strengthen a community, uh, I think punishing those who are hurting the very most is the best answer. Um, instead, I think using that money for the cameras, uh, like uh, someone said earlier, um, for <coughs> getting at the root of larger social issues, like you know the homeless population and poverty in general, and you know racism, um, and kind of trying to undo those institutionalized workings would be um, a better solution. 
think it's important to definitely look at the research before making any big decisions um, on this surveillance issue. And um, also, I you know, thank you for listening to us and everybody here. Um, and I really hope you hear us and uh, see what you think we value and represent that. Um, I think that's really important. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jamila Gore. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Jamila Gore, 51 Village Hill Road. Um, I want to speak out and thank the counselors who came up with the resolution against the cameras for surveillance, of, um, police surveillance. I think I want to ditto what everyone else says, but I think Northampton is a very unique community. And in order to keep it that way, I think we should try to go for more community policing and less militarized policing. Because other cities already do that. We could be a flagship city for community policing and we could be a, a leader in that instead of following the crowd of other people who are in this political climate of police brutality are um, combating that with more police force. And I think that's not necessary in our town. We don't need that. We have a, a good town as it is. And business owners who are worried about you know, losing their business, I mean, maybe they should concentrate on why the rents are so high for businesses in Northampton. And that they can stay in their business if we lower you know, the cost of business. I've seen Main Street deteriorate in the time I've been here. Maybe we could work towards something to help that and to help our community thrive instead of helping spy on and watch our citizens on community. And ditto to what everyone said. Thank you. 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 Thank and I'm here speaking tonight on behalf of the Downtown Northampton Association, um, really to echo many of the thoughts that Councillor Bidwell um, in his Gazette column mentioned, but I actually want to ditto some of the thoughts that the woman that's speaking um, before me raised about looking into ideas of community policing. Um, and really I'm here to ask this committee and to ask the City Council to table action on this resolution and the ordinance for two primary reasons. The first is a lot of questions have come up um, questions about data, questions about um, issues that Chief Casper raised that I would like us to have the opportunity to look at and to research. I'd like to be able to talk to other towns to see how the cameras have worked or have not worked in their community, um, to see what they mean by the cameras work, to see how it, what impact it's had on their street. And I don't think that rushing into a vote on this will enable that sort of um, research to happen. I also think that there are other members of the downtown community that we haven't heard from. Um, we've heard from all of you. We've heard from one or two business owners. I haven't heard from anybody from social services, for example. And I would love to hear from them and have them participate in this discussion because I think they're a crucial part of this conversation and I, I don't like that. I don't like them being left out of this conversation. Um, finally, because of the timeline that's controlling the city's budget, it's my understanding that any request for these cameras wouldn't come before City Council until next February or March when you're voting on the budget resolution. So I'm not sure what the rush is to vote on the ordinance and the resolution right now. It seems like we have time where we could engage in a more thoughtful discussion. Um, and a discussion that's perhaps not three minute sound bites on camera in front of whatever particular committee is hearing the issue that day but it's perhaps around a table in more of an interactive dialogue where we could learn from each other rather than just talk at you and then have you talk at us. So thank you. Thank you. Dan Gilbert. Hi, my name is Dan Gilbert. I live on State Street. Um, I want to say that I really appreciate the fact that this is how we are conducting business here and that people do have a chance to get up and talk and listen to one another um, and learn from each other here. Um, and that this is a public meeting and no one is being excluded from talking in this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to read something um, from a, a major news source today. Um, 
In one of the most, in one of the country's most camera saturated cities, none of the all seeing crime prevention devices happened to flag a man who brought 10 automatic weapons with him to the Las Vegas Strip. Vegas is one of the most heavily surveilled cities in the country, particularly in the area where Sunday's shooting occurred. Like many US cities, Vegas has invested heavily in surveillance as a counterterrorism measure in the last decade. And like many cities before it, Vegas has found that the usefulness of dragnet data collection to deter or prevent mass acts of violence is wildly overstated. None of Las Vegas's cameras stopped a man from walking into Mandalay and the stocking, stockpiling a small arsenal of automatic weapons in the hotel. I thought it was appropriate that this meeting happened today. Um, Lastly, I just want to add that in 2008, the London police estimated that for every 1,000 security cameras they had installed, one crime was prevented mm. per 1,000 cameras mm. in the city of London. And this was reported on by the London Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Mm. Uh, Jess Johnson. I'm Jess Johnson. I live at 119 Meadow Street, and I'm here on behalf of Jennifer Goodhart, the owner of Acadia Herbals, um, who very much wanted to be here tonight, but could not be. So she asked me to deliver this message. Okay. She writes, as a downtown business owner, I do not support the installation of surveillance cameras in Northampton. I've been very impressed with the Northampton Police's response to incidents in and around my shop both in terms of the speed and the investigation. And I believe that our resources would be better invested in building relationships with people rather than watching them. That is to say, I would like to see our police be part of the community rather than serving as watchers. I share concerns that people of color, people without homes, people with mental illness, and people who are undocumented might be unfairly targeted, and that surveillance footage would not be protected from outside authorities. It's not clear to me that cameras would prevent crime but investing in building relationships with all downtown community members of mine. Thank you. Thank you. I also am here on behalf of myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if I could take the other two minutes for that. Um, Let me and just add your name then. <laughs> so your name and address? I'm Jess Johnson at 119. Oh, that's right. Um, yes, and you spoke. Okay. Yes. And yeah, there's a letter. So I am a historian. I work for a history department at one of the local colleges. and. I think history offers a really crucial lens to understand what we're talking about here. So in this historical moment, in our present day historical context, so right now, it's just so ordinary and so normal, it's like unremarkable that the U.S. would incarcerate more of its residents than any nation on Earth. Um, that video surveillance would be a logical, unremarkable, or almost like common sense advancement um, or solution to this, at least in many places. I'm glad that there's debate about it here. It's part and parcel of this historical moment. But one of the really cool things about history is it offers this, this chance to see the water we're swimming in. So to see the things that are like, just like air we breathe, but are really not normal. It's totally historically anomal anomalous that police surveillance would be a solution to some of the questions we're talking about here. Um, as a historian, I also want to um, remind us that the role of city government is not and should not be um, to aid the process of gentrification and to displace poor people from our streets. The role of our city government in a city committed to sanctuary, both historically and our present day moment, um, is not and should not be to institute measures that can undermine that very commitment. Um, and I say that especially now. So I'm sure you've heard the news, but just in the past week, I specifically targeted communities that were sanctuary cities. So 50 people in the state of Massachusetts were detained and are now in proceedings for deportation precisely because of our sanctuary status. Um, and there are, in fact, Northampton residents in jails awaiting deportation since the last time we met about this issue. Um, I believe and want to believe deeply that that's not the intent of the cameras. Um, and I also know that there's no way for our city to prevent them from getting in the hands of ICE, so I thank you for the humility and um, your leadership and having the courage to change course. Um, and finally, as a Northampton resident and one of your constituents, I implore you to hold in your hearts that Northampton's for all of us. 
It's for the rich, it's for the poor, it's for people with homes, and for those without. It's for people who are seen as suspect by the police and people who are not. And I just thank you so much for the resolution and your willingness to act upon it. Thank you. Um, thanks. My name is Eddie Haugen. I live at 256 Crookside Circle. Um, that's the first house I've ever lived in. I've only ever lived in big cities my entire life in apartments, and it happens to be the house that my family, my wife and I bought for our two daughters and myself. So I'm a homeowner, I'm not a business owner, but I am a homeowner and I am a voter. And um, I just want to say first off, I'll try to be brief, but <laughs> that would be just an attempt. Um, uh, I really appreciate this forum and that we get to talk out loud. I really appreciate that people are coming out here and holding up these signs. Uh, I think that's um, pretty much was addressed in the resolution that that's the spirit of this city. And if there are people that want to debate, you know, you're just talking about one facet or one part of the city. Um, you know, I'm a home homeowner. I work with, um, you know, people in the community, people with intellectual disabilities and other disabilities, and I have two daughters, both in the Northampton Public School System. You know, I'm not like here to rabble rouse. I'm here to like figure out solutions. I just think the timing of this is so inappropriate that I kind of, I'm almost, I can't believe that other people can't believe it as much as I can't believe it. <laughs> um, there is no sense in doing this now. I mean, there's no sense in doing it later either, but there's definitely no sense in doing it now. Um, and I'm excited about the future. Someone mentioned this idea of the community working with the police and being uh, innovators and on the vanguard of the new way to do it, sort of the anti-Joe Arpaio. And it's very um, troubling that this is the this is even a concept in which my two daughters, 10 and 3 today, um, are going to grow up in this scene. It makes me much less uh, wanting to, to stay and to fulfill that 30-year mortgage that I have on my house um, and move back to a place like, you know, believe it or not, super surveilled and super, you know, sort of, um, you know, big issues with the police in all the big cities I've ever lived in. Um, but it has a kind of a feeling that I think the resolution speaks to of we have the right not to be surveilled all the time. And someone did mention earlier as well, I'm sorry I missed some of the speakers, uh, that you don't have privacy in public places. And I just, again, like them, I just, I just disagree. So I didn't get to get to all of it, but I'm excited about the future and I'm excited about the um, moving forward, and I hate to use a cliche word, but with love and with, you know, finding common ground with everybody here and really just doing hard work. Don't be, don't take the lazy way out. That's what I would say. Thank you. April Dunlop. Hello, my name is April Dunlap, and I live at 12 Union Street. And I want to say that I've lived in this town for three years in the same house, um, and that I've worked in the restaurant industry for just as long. Um, I am used to walking home by myself at night at 2 or 2.30 in the morning from work, and I have never felt unsafe. Um, I want to say, though, that also in this time we have formed connections with people who live outside. Um, mm -hmm. People who I pass many times a week on the street trying to make a living, trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And they have felt unsafe. The people who live outside have felt unsafe in the city already. Can mm -hmm. everyone hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. And I'm opposed to the installation of surveillance cameras because I'm opposed to the criminalization of their survival. The people who live outside in this city are a part of this community. They are not a nuisance. They are not troublesome to business owners, as we've heard attested to tonight already. They are a part of this community. They are people who live in Northampton. 
them, and I can't speak for them, but want um, them to be considered, uh, and their safety to be considered as we consider um, installing these cameras. Um, and I recognize that there's a ton of people I don't want to repeat things that have already been said, and I'm opposed to the cooperation of Washington um, with immigration and customs enforcement that would lead to deportation and opposed to the ways that people who live outside, people of color, queer folks, substance abuse, homeless folks would be targeted by these cameras. And I just want to add also that um, someone mentioned, a, a business owner in, in town mentioned that there is aggressive behavior on the streets. And, and also in my late walks home from work, um, the only people who have ever been aggressive to me are drunk men who are here as tourists on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So, for what that's worth. Um, additionally, I would like to see these funds go to support the survival of the people who live outside um, in a myriad of ways that have already been mentioned. Um, and lastly, I want to say, if you want people to do more shopping in town, you might consider paying all the employees in this town a living wage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jack Chalker. Hi, uh, I'm Jack Chalker and I live at 300 Elm Street. Um, I just want to echo what's already been said. I, uh, I'm also, I support this move to oppose the surveillance cameras um, on the basis that I don't believe anyone can reasonably argue that surveillance would um, make this community safer, especially for the people who are already the least safe. Um, homeless people, street bald people, low income people, people of color, queer people. Um, I'm concerned uh, about, I come from Seattle. I've lived here for a number of months, but I lived in Seattle before. And of course, it's a different place. Um, but in Seattle, there was a very, very close adjust, um, relationship between the Chamber of Commerce and the city government uh, to the degree that the, the people who would come to meetings and the general will of the population was not represented. The will of business owners and people who did profit from things like this was what was most frequently represented. Um, and I think uh, about the, the question of behavior and the question of threatening people, I think regardless of intentions in individual situations, it's important to recognize that we live in we live, we live within the systems, we live within trends. Um, and the trend in this country since the 80s, but well before, since the 80s especially, has been to criminalize poverty um, through means like the police, um, surveillance, and high rents, um, and the lack of representation. So I just wanted to uh, share those thoughts and emphasize that the, I think the conversation, it's sad that the conversation is about whether or not we should have cameras. It, the conversation should be about how to support these people who are living outside. Yeah. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, Robert Joyce. <coughs> thank you. Uh, Robert Joyce, uh, 35 Food Street, Northampton. Um, I, um, I'm not a communist, but I make something like that. The thing is, I, I view information inequity as being um, essentially a class issue, a class struggle, if you will, between the uh, ruling elite and uh, the lower classes. Uh, when you set up a surveillance infrastructure, what you're doing is setting up an infrastructure that can be used to, to form two classes, maybe not right away. Maybe right now, anybody can see the, the, the footage from these cameras, but that's not gonna last. You know, very soon, the ruling elite will see the pictures. The police will see the pictures. The, the lower classes will never see the pictures. And uh, so we will have information inequity. We will have two classes, the observers and the observees. And that's how it will be. Two classes. 
It will split us down the middle. And uh, we will, you know, we, we, you know, think of Edward Snowden. He's got the Na National Security Agency, the Central Intelligence Agency, want to prosecute him for doing what? For doing what? Ask yourself. For revealing their secrets. Why should they have any secrets? Maybe they should have a camera in every office, in every CIA <laughs> office. Why not? Maybe in, our, in your offices, camera. Why not? And we should all see it. Why not? All the time, 24 7. Why not? Because we're not equal. Uh, you know, we can't watch you. You can watch us, though. Now, maybe you'll say, today, today, uh, we can, today we can, everybody can look at the, the footage. Well, that doesn't have to last, and it won't. It'll, it'll settle down to a two-class system. The ruling elite, uh, uh, the observers, and the, the undercast, the, the observees. And, uh, and that's how it'll be. And, we'll, and you know, those of us who are not the police, the officials, the wealthy, the powerful, will not get to see the pictures. But the rich, the powerful, they'll be able to see the pictures. They'll laugh at us, at our, at our weakness, our poverty. They'll laugh. And they'll have a lot of fun. And we'll just be watched like chickens in a coop, like animals. And that's the way it'll be. And Edward Snowden will be arrested someday for revealing their precious secrets, because it's top secret. Oh, by the way, we do have cameras on Main Street in Northampton on, on the traffic lights right now. And you can see them. Just go up to Florence Center. You can see the cameras on the, on the traffic lights right now. Their plane is dead. Thank you. Leo Bessie. Hi, I'm Cleo. I live at 178 Prospect Street. Um, I just wanted to ditto what everyone is saying who's against the surveillance cameras and also point out that um, business owners who are concerned with uh, their voices not being heard can come and speak freely. Um, the only people who really can't speak are people who don't have addresses, which I think um, is an issue in and of itself. Um, so I also wanted to say I'm someone who interacts with the homeless community in Northampton basically every day of my life. And I've literally never had a violent interaction with any of them. I want to echo what a previous speaker said, which was that the only violent interactions they have had are with, um, again, drunk men at night um, who are typically not homeless. So I just want to say that. And again, anyone who wants to have their voice heard here can have their voice heard here. So thank you. Thank you. Miles Jacobson. <coughs> Hi, I'm Miles Jacobson. I live on Birchall Road in Florence, and I have an office on 16 Center Street in Northampton. And um, as anybody who's downtown a lot in Northampton knows, one of the frequent things that happens in Northampton are political associations of one sort or another, of people getting together to have political expression. It's really a wonderful thing to happen. That political expression, however, without a doubt is chilled, the more surveillance there is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know about if any of you have ever had your picture taken at a march. I have. It was anti Vietnam march. It's been some time. And I was a student, so I was pretty careless about, you know, I was pretty impervious to things like that. But I noticed that my, parent, my picture was being taken. It didn't really matter whether anybody ever saw that picture. And it doesn't matter, it does matter, but it doesn't simply matter who will see these pictures. It matters that people will know that high definition pictures are being taken of everybody. And there are a lot of marginalized people. There are a lot of people who are without many resources and who are being looked at already by one government agency or another, or who are fearful that they may be or who don't feel they can afford to be seen in association with somebody or other. Mm. And even though they might just be going into first churches or Edwards, 
church, both of which hold wonderful um, meetings all the time that encourage freedom of expression on difficult subjects. Mm -hmm. There will be people who will think twice and not come. Mm -hmm. It will have a chilling effect on day one. Mm -hmm. Not down the road. Doesn't, I mean, it might, well, there are a lot of pros and cons to everything that the government does. One of the people who talked earlier mentioned, it was Dana, that we don't, might not have a specific legislation now that protects this space. But that's the way the Constitution works. We have general principles. Those principles are <coughs> freedom of association, excuse me, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech. Our basic First Amendment rights are there in the abstract and in particular circumstances, need protection. Those rights need to be articulated in particular circumstances. This is one of those circumstances. Because once there is these cameras set up, once people know that those cameras are set up, there will be a chilling effect on freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. And one of Northampton's greatest assets will be lost. So I very much support what the commission is doing. I hope that the vote goes through, that it's not tabled. If in the future you come to understand that something else is needed, nothing will prevent you from reconsidering this. But right now, this is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So all I have on the list, is there anyone else who would like to uh, Yes? I see one or anyone else besides the okay. Please come up and state your name and address. Sam Bursey, 10 Linden Street. I want to say first of all that I oppose any measure to install 24-hour surveillance cameras in the downtown of Northampton. And thank you for considering uh, action to oppose it. I, uh, I support and appreciate uh, the language of the resolution and think that speaks to Northampton and our core values. Um, to suggest that we need cameras Permanent cameras in Northampton is to insist that we treat each other like strangers. Mm. And it doesn't make any sense to me because I know and I have known Northampton to be better than a Walmart parking lot. I've known my neighbors to be better than strangers. Mm. To say that there's a place in the downtown for permanent surveillance is to say that I was right if in the last four years of my living here as a renter, I ever felt scared or suspicious of people when I first moved here. I didn't know anybody, and then now all of a sudden, uh, the somebody wants to start spying on me. That's what I know. But that's not the Northampton that I know, and that's not what I look out on when I sit on my porch. You put a camera somewhere if you think there's going to be a crime. I don't want to wait outside for a table with green bean or for the bus and look up at this lidless plastic eye and have that thought. I don't want it to be anybody's job deciding what to do with the footage of me waiting for a table and thinking really depressing stuff about the state of the world. <laughs> I'm watching this all very carefully. Uh, I've noticed that people have been thanking the council for considering this measure. I'm not sure if I want to do that. It just seems like the decent thing to do to stand up for people's rights. It seems like the job that people ask you to do when they voted for it. <laughs> And it seems like the responsibility that everybody has to say no and to not let the day come when you could have said no. Right. These cameras are going to be permanent. <laughs> you know? And uh, the, the, the fears about uh, accountability and who will actually uh, possess these footage, these, these are not things that I take, light, take lightly. Um, and man, I, if you're not feeling sweat running down your neck when you're thinking about that, thinking about the, uh, the, the controls that are going to be put uh, on this information, the slippery slope I'm talking about, then I'm not sure, I'm not sure that there's a point in actually having <coughs> people come and talk, you know? Because then, then what? It all makes sense to me, I'm saying. I see even the question of should we or do we need these cameras as evidence <coughs> of a putrid moral cowardice 
something which itself needs to be driven out with a bullwhip. That all makes perfect sense to me. What I'm going to watch now is how people talk about uh, taking our rights away. When the subject is, do I have rights or not? How do people behave? What's the responsible procedural way to recognize or violate my human rights? It seems somebody called the tune, and now somebody's playing the music. Don't let the day come when you could have stopped it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes our public comment. Oh, oh one quick one. Uh, I would suggest that people go up to the Northampton Main Street, Florence. You know where Florence is, like, like. and uh, see, on the, right in the middle, uh, in the center where Maple Street and, and Main Street cross, there are cameras on all four traffic lights. Right now. Thank you. Thank you for that information. So now uh, the public comment session is ended and we move into the regular order of business just to let folks know what this is. So, um, yes? I'm sorry. Um, I guess I should have raised my hand earlier. I just wanted to say something. Oh, you want to say something? Yes. I'll be, I'll be quick. That's fine. Let me I'm get out. Sorry. So, let me just do um, So, um, Hi, my name is Miranda Jacobs, and I'm a student at Smith College. I've been living and studying in Northampton for the past three, this is my third year now, and I'm a psychology major. I plan to be a forensic psychology uh, something. Well, I'll figure that out once I graduate. Um, anyways, uh, a lot of people here have spoken about their personal experience, which is great and definitely useful, but I feel like it might be refreshing to just hear some facts. Um, People without homes are disproportionately targeted when it comes to police brutality and acts of violence. People of color are disproportionately targeted when it comes to acts of violence. Especially trans women of color are overwhelmingly more likely to be victims of a violent attack than they are to perpetuate a violent attack. And I think that although no one has come out and said it, the safety that we're talking about, mm -hmm. that we're worrying about, is not the safety of people of color, of trans women, mm -hmm. and trans men, and LGBT people. It's the safety of the people who are already in power, who already have so many rights. And until we care about the safety of everybody, until we care about the safety of the people who we should actually be worrying about because they're the ones being targeted, then the fact that we would even have cameras in the first place is a joke. Um, so I fully support this idea of not installing them. Um, so, yes, thank you. Thank you. And that does conclude then our public. I, I, I see two more hands thing. raised. Yeah. I see two more hands raised, and I'm going to just ask is it just these two hands raised for? And you've already, did you, is there something else you needed yeah, to add? Yeah, I'd like to clarify something. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. certainly. So, uh, and there was one other? Okay, and mm -hmm. three? Yes. Okay, yes, please. Okay, okay so first Nancy, okay. then Thank the you. woman in back, and then this woman here who was just behind in. Yes, please. Thank you. When I'm we speaking come right up to about, the when I'm here. speaking come about to a, us. aggressive behavior on the street, when I'm thinking and talking about aggressive behavior on the street, what I see is people without homes being aggressive toward one another. They're the ones who suffer from that aggression more directly than usually than other people do. And other people who are coming into town see this aggressive behavior and all this kind of stuff. And they're discouraged from coming into town, especially if they have children. But it's, it made it sound as though you know we didn't care about these folks. When I, when I say they know me and I know them, I mean it. We, we know each other. We do care. And I'm not the only shopkeeper who does care. We do things to try to help in our own way. So I just wanted to be clear about that. Thank, no, you, for, say, thank you for clarifying. And I just want to let people know this is we don't actually have the opportunity now to have a, a dialogue. I do have two other hands of folks who, uh, another clarification and then a new comment. The clarification first, and then I'll have the new comment. I apologize. I was very nervous, and I didn't um, say what I needed to. Um, I 
Also, I'm a homeowner and I'm a taxpayer, and I'm very glad that I voted for a few people on the council, city council, um, and not so glad that other ones I didn't get a chance to vote because they weren't in my ward. Um, I would highly resent that my tax dollars are going towards something that are going to be possibly any way, any, any chance that they can be used in a nefarious way against me. And I also wanted to clarify that the most awful experience I had with the police was actually when I was reporting a crime. Mm -hmm. And I was in the police station at the window and I was actually harassed for 20 minutes, followed outside by a police woman and who searched my car and insisted that I open my trunk. And I was reporting a sexual crime. And um, I just wanted to make that very clear that these kinds of cameras with the police on the other end would make me feel like I don't want to come to Northampton and that I would want to sell my house and move. And also, I would encourage other people not to come to downtown Northampton as well. Anyone visiting, I would bring them elsewhere into other towns, other restaurants, other stores. Thank you very much for hearing me. I think we're not going to be able to do that for everyone. We, 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 I did see one final hand. Yes, OK, please, this is for the current, and then we need to move on. Hi, my name is Shelly. I live on Cherry Street. I've lived here about five years now. I do pay taxes. I don't own a house. Could you, could you say your last name, please? Rosen. Uh, so uh, I very excited about security cameras. Uh, I've worked downtown, and I work in downtown Holyoke. Uh, I've heard the main reasoning for the minutes of the con uh, contract panhandlers, which seems like a really petty excuse. Mm -hmm. I don't really believe that that's the reason. The panhandlers maybe might be annoying to tourists, but to residents. Like, you learn their names, you know them. Like, mm -hmm. I always say hi to Lewis, and sometimes I buy him a tea, and he's nice. And I've mm -hmm. never seen one of them be violent to anyone. Uh, so I just don't understand why that's the case. And I work with populations, I don't see that kind of violence. I don't understand how people came as their. Uh, I take the bus to Holy Oak from every day, and they, I knew that they probably had security cameras, but they recently put up a screen that shows you the security camera feed. And it's chilling and really creepy being surrounded by that once in your face. People used to have conversations they don't anymore. I'm really self conscious all the time, and it's uncomfortable because, you know, Holyoke is mostly Latino people there, and they all stopped talking to each other on the bus as soon as they all knew they're being watched. So Northampton has a community downtown. The community is not the same as we that shop at our stores and should we need their money, but when it comes to you being surveilled, they're here once. We're here every day walking down. We're the ones being watched, and a lot mm -hmm. of us are activists. A lot of us have lives. A lot of us are not interested in being watched. A lot of reasons activists go missing sometimes, mm -hmm. and you don't know what happened, and the police aren't helping us, and we don't like the idea of the state watching us because we don't know who's looking at those feeds, and just because maybe you trust to put them in now, 20 years from now, what if mm. something happens and Northampton has our own little Trump and now he has the security cameras? You don't want that. That's mm. a terrible idea. I, it's chilling. The are communities. The people on the family leaders, they're part of our community. We don't exist to serve people coming up here from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I like their money, but the job of the city council <laughs> is to represent the people who live here. The yes. people who live here are mostly working class people who live here. Uh, you know, I think our highest income on average is 40000 We're not a rich area. You should represent us. We don't want to be surveilled. So I really appreciate that there's a motion put forward to ban security cameras being added. I don't think there should be any security cameras. I think that there should be <coughs> discipline on the police for even proposing it and trying to move forward with it on um, such a quick time scale. Uh, from what I've heard, it's going to rush through. So that's my comment. Thank you. So we'll, um, as I was saying, as we move on to the rest of the body of the meeting, we have um, the items on the agenda that I know uh, people are here, but there's uh, item four is um, discussion of inclusiveness in public discussions of proposed resolution and ordinance. And then those proposed resolution and ordinance follow on the agenda, items five and six, and what's Typically, uh, the way the process typically works is an item is referred 
to a subcommittee and then we um, we dispose of that item as it seems relevant so there may be it may end up being uh, recommended to the full City Council with a positive recommendation or sent to the full City Council with a negative recommendation or sent to the full City Council with a neutral recommendation or sent with no recommendation so those are the ways that this could be these matters could be disposed of and so um, that being said um, you're welcome to stay and um, hear the discussion, but at this point here, the members of the committee will discuss the matters and then um, we'll take them up one at a time. So, yes, please. If, if I could just ask a, a question about our agenda. Uh, we, we, we have a police chief here, and I was just wondering if... Yes, I asked the if, chief. If, while well, we still have a, have a, have a crowd here, <coughs> might be appropriate to recognize the, 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 uh, the, the, the chief the doesn't chief. need to be recognized since she's on our agenda and I did ask if she would uh, at any point like to uh, join us at the table um, and I think you're asking for the chief to join us I'm just yes. asking that we give her a give, give her a chance to, to, to speak while we still have a, a crowd because as we, as we work our way through the evening I know we'll start losing people yes Okay, um, Chief, if you don't mind, would you join us at the table here? And then, I am, although the questions will be from us, because we don't, have an, we don't have really a mechanism to actually have an interchange with the public and the Chief at this point. Okay, thank you. So, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chief. And so, I will say that the next item um, is the item four, which is discussion of inclusiveness and public discussions a proposed resolution and ordinance, and Councilor Bidwell asked if this item um, appear at this point in the agenda, and so I'll turn it over to Councilor Bidwell. Sure, thank you. The my 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 my, my reason for asking that we have a, an opportunity to talk about it a little bit is is is, is really about providing opportunities to reach out to folks to be sure that we really do hear all views on this complicated issue. But more than that, I, I had also inquired whether it might make sense to regard this as, a, a, as an organizational meeting in the sense that I, be, I, I don't believe we're, 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 we're ready or it would be appropriate to, to here and now uh, act as a committee on either of these measures. I would like to know that like other important matters that have come our way come to the council for consideration, they've been sent to a committee where a committee laid out a, a process and figured out how we're going to learn from the experience of other communities, how we're going to bring in a variety of expert testimony on all sides of the issue. Uh, in some cases, we have relied on surveys uh, to hear the voices of folks who could not be here or chose not to be here. Um, and I, I, I would like to propose, and, and that one of the things we talked about in that discussion of how we think about our next several meetings of this committee, when we try to get at that, one of those things we should talk about, I believe, is how do we get the voice, yes, of, uh, of workers downtown, who for the most part have, have, have not spoken up for, uh, for business what? employees, what? Where for business workers. And, and I, would, I would just ask for a, a little respectful hearing, please. And, and uh, if you think the holding the signs up does that, then, 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 then great. But uh, I, I just, uh, I, I think the very fact of holding the signs up is, is in many ways, it's your total right to do it. Of course, that's what, that's what, that's what free speech is about. But it does make it difficult for other voices to show up and speak. And some of you may not believe that, but I can assure you that that is the case. And I would just like one of the items that we talk about to be how can we how can we be sure that we have a full range of views on this topic brought to our brought to our discussion before we even think about uh, acting. So 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 my 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 request is that we. One of the things, important things that we do here tonight is to think about how for our next several meetings, uh, this was not given to us as a community study request or a committee study request, but I would argue that it's very similar in, 
And we should treat it the same way. When, when the, uh, a little over a year ago, there was concern about a variety of issues in downtown, including the, uh, how restaurant workers were being treated. It got referred as a committee study request to the Community Services Committee, and we didn't immediately go to resolutions and to ordinances. What we did was to lay out a two or three month process where we worked hard to hear all perspectives, to bring in experts from all, every, every viewpoint imaginable. We heard the results of surveys that had been done, of the, in this case of, of, of restaurant workers who didn't want to come here and speak up personally. And I would argue that that's an approach that we should take here in this committee to tackle this complicated issue. And that would also allow our police chief over some period of time to continue bringing, uh, bringing her ideas and her research to us. Okay, and because this isn't actually, this is just an item called discussion on the agenda, I'll just ask if there's any other thoughts that people would want to respond or offer to Councilor Bigwell? I thought just, Council? <coughs> uh, hearing um, Amy Callahan speaking, um, I don't agree with tabling this. I like what she talked about the data, which I said at City Council, um, issues that come up, and a lot of research. And we've heard this also at City Council. I mean, and it's true, the money is not going to be available until around February or so. So I think it's a learning process for everybody. But I do have some questions, and I'm very concerned about it. We do have the chief here. Um, before we move on, I, I think you what we it? need to do is we need to talk about the substance of okay. Councilor Bidwell's request, I'm, I'm which is request. which is actually about how we dispose. In some ways, it's backwards because it what we're talking about is how we're going to dispose of the resolution and the ordinance. Yeah. You know how we're going to how we're going to send them, and so um, I don't know if you want to rephrase what you're saying in a motion. Is that I'd be, what you're I'd be, I'd be glad to make a Well, I, I just am not sure if that's what you're. Okay. Uh, I would I would move uh, over the period of the next two to three months. Uh, we lay out a plan for systematically hearing the experience of other communities, bringing, bringing them in where we can, including in our own backyard, Amherst and Holyoke and East Hampton, that we, that we uh, lay out a timetable for hearing various pieces of important research that the chief has been looking into and, and, and wants to, to, to bring to us, expecting that we may not be able to get to it. I know this is rather long. I'll, I'll, I'll go back and, and summarize it. That, that we uh, adopt a, a plan here tonight to over three months hear research, hear the experience from, from, from other communities, uh, do public hearings designed to reach out to those who are finding it rather intimidating to actually be here tonight and, and, and last week, and that we allow ourselves time for deliberation. So uh, a, time, uh, a timeline that involves hearing research, hearing experience of other communities, hearing input from, from uh, other points of view and other constituencies, perhaps through survey, and that we allow ourselves time for deliberation. Did you get that as the motion, Councilor? Oh, I got the gist, I <laughs> the, the gist is good. Enough. Is there a second? Okay. There being no second to that, I would um, suggest then that we move right on to the next item on the agenda. And that is the resolution itself. So, so, so by, by doing that, we're saying that uh, this, we, we don't want to have any further discussion of how we include the, the perspectives. Well, we, can have, here. we could have that, yeah. Um, we could continue that discussion, but I'm not sure how, handbook. yes. I'm not sure whether you want to have that discussion prior to the motions for the, so usually you have a motion and then you have the discussion. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Are we discussing um, 
if the, there's not further discussion on your motion, because it wasn't seconded. I know, but I had my hand up and you didn't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. You seconded that? <coughs> no, I apologize. I wanted, I wanted to speak. Oh, what we can't offered. speak until there's been a second. Then I will second it. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't see your, didn't see your hand <coughs> going up to play. So, yes. Um, why don't we then start with the discussion further? Okay. I, the problem I'm having, Councilor Bidwell, is talking about the research and holding this back for, what, three months? I think you said two to three months. Well, to me, when you're looking at Amherst, which the chief did bring up, Amherst, Boucher Town, and I think it's Amherst, East Stanton, and Holyoke. Why? That's all I care about. I just wanted that research. And to me, that does not take two to three months. That can be looked at, I think, pretty quickly. So, and the chief has had plenty of time to do that because of the senior center meeting we've had. So that's the problem I have with that, is what type of research are you actually asking for? And I don't want to necessarily just go. No, I'm asking him. <laughs> okay, well, then, uh, Councillor, I'll let uh, Councillor Bidwell answer the question and then Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you. Uh, as an example, Councillor O'Donnell and I both cited uh, studies uh, in, in, our, in our council meeting last week, and there is a great deal of research. Some of it, some of it fairly high quality. Some of the research that's out there aggregates 30 and 40 and 50 different studies to sort of uh, eliminate the, the tendency to cherry pick one or another to show what you wanted to show. And I would argue that there's a great deal of study of this of this of this topic, some more relevant than others, that, that, that would really inform this discussion. I'm very interested in evidence. I would like us to gather evidence that is available from, from, from research. I think as a deliberative body we should be we should be looking for, for, for evidence and have a, a little bit of a curiosity about uh, what's out there. And so I, I would argue that since there is absolutely no need to make any decision immediately, that we do uh, 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 allow ourselves the time to <coughs> gather and look at that research in a way, as well as the experience from, from neighboring communities right, right here in our backyard, as well as figure out ways, the way we did dealing with restaurant workers, to find ways to get their voices into the, into the conversation. And I do believe that we would not regret allowing ourselves two to three months to do that, to have a truly deliberative decision, as opposed to being accused of being impulsive and reflexive in the decision. Thank you. Council? Thank you. I, I appreciate the the caution um, with which um, the council can work to approach this. I think that's that's commendable. Um, I'll tell you my reasons for opposing continuing over, over such a long period of time. Uh, and maybe you'll see my perspective as well. Um, just in general, I don't agree with the premise that open public city council meetings or meetings of our committees are inherently intimidating. Mm -hmm. um, I, guess, um, I guess what would be the alternative? I guess it would be closed meetings, um, <laughs> which I do not support. I think they have to be open. Um, I'm glad these, these proceedings are on camera um, because they're public meetings and they ought to be. And so that's the spirit with which I want to go forward. And the point I made the city council um, meeting Last, the week before last was um, I think it is our responsibility of, of our local legislature the city council to debate this and show some leadership on it and I keep hearing that a resolution uh, squ squashes debate but my hand hurts because I just wrote 26 names of people who provided public comment today and provided public comment at the last meeting and we've had maybe five hours so far of discussion and in addition to the work we will do on this, on, on the resolution and the ordinance in this committee, this is scheduled to go to a second committee, the Committee on Legislative Matters. So I feel like the process is ample, and um, 
let me highlight a, a, another procedural thing is our rules, we would not be, strictly speaking, allowed to keep it for three months because our rules require that <laughs> um, a, a resolution that's sent to the Legislative Matters Committee, among others, must be returned from the other committees, this one, within 60 days. And then Legislative Matters is 30 days after that. So in a way, there's almost a maximum 90-day window built in. It's not my intention. I, I didn't, it leads me to my next question. Um, how is this resolution different from all the other resolutions that we had, except that it has an immediate effect in the city? Um, we recently passed a resolution, which I supported, about single-payer universal health care. Um, but tremendously complex issue. In fact, it was the Council for More Two who brought up, uh, not quite an objection to it, but he reminded us that there are many different methods that can be used to achieve that goal of universal health care. But we didn't send that to committee. We debated it, and we had two readings to the council. Even when this gets back from two committees, we're going to have two readings. So I feel like there's plenty of time. Actually, as Councilor Barge said, there's plenty of time to get the answers to the specific questions that we need. And I would hope that if there are questions, nothing wrong with questions. I hope that they would be specifically enumerated. It's not perhaps best for the discussion to say, there are many questions, but we don't know what the questions are. Um, and I say it respectfully, I'm not trying to, again, uh, I'll reiterate that it's, I appreciate the caution and the deliberation, but I don't see why this process lacks deliberation compared to other resolutions we've done. Um, so I'd make that, those two comments, and that's why I think we should continue with, as they say in Congress, regular order. You know, let's just keep going with this as we do other issues. That's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. I'll ask if you don't mind, we, you know, it's a little disruptive to have a lot of the applause, so um, I'm just going to ask if there's further discussion on this matter of the taking a few months. Further? Yes? I, 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 I might just add that I, I think an important distinction between this and, for example, the Medicare fall resolution is we knew that all we were doing was weighing in on a deliberation that's going to be going on for months and months and months in the state legislature. The difference with this one is that we're talking about something that is within our control right here and now, and, and we, can, we, we can make a determination. And I believe it's appropriate that we do that. Uh, but I would hate to see us moving quickly into doing that. And this is, and the other difference is that before there wasn't coupled a resolution with an ordinance. And we have this curiosity here where if we vote on a resolution uh, that says as a matter of principle and as a matter of our values, we, we find further cameras downtown to be abhorrent, then it's hard for me to imagine how a month later or two months later we can pretend that we're having an objective conversation all over again on, a, on, a, a, on an ordinance. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll offer a, a thought experiment to you, for example, uh, Councilor Donald. Can you imagine, uh, whether it's at this meeting or legislative affairs, when we get to the council voting for this resolution, which I assume you would because you're a sponsor, and then two months later, if that were would be the timing, when when an ordinance that is more than just a statement of philosophy, but actually is binding law, it, it, two months later to, to enact a, a law that would, that would ban any further cameras down there. Can you imagine voting differently than you had on the resolution? It, we, any, any of us who did that would be accused of flip-flopping and, and hypocrisy. And so to vote on, on a resolution is effectively to uh, foreordain the way that the ordinance is going to come out, and I think it's too important a matter, uh, too complicated a matter, to 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 do, to be decided in haste. Uh, uh, if you want. Well, I'll just. You. And actually, being the uh, the chair, I know that my comments should be limited to allow members uh, the opportunity to debate, but I do want to note because a couple of people have suggested that this is a hurried process, that this is no more than our ordinary, regular process. Items, in fact, both items 
would be taken at the same meeting today and at a, a legislative matters meeting and then at a first reading to the city council should that be the course that this would move forward. Um, that's all. I want to let uh, somebody else raise their hand. Uh, it was council? Yes. Oh, sure. Just to respond to the question from <clears throat> council from Ward 2. Um, strangely, I, I could see myself voting for the resolution but against the ordinance, both of which I authored. And the reason is the ordinance, actually, Council Board 2, it brings up <coughs> a good point because he identifies yet another avenue for more discussion. The resolution, if it were passed, would be done well before the ordinance because the ordinance requires legal review. So it's possible the solicitor would say it's not lawful in terms of the Massachusetts Constitution and general laws. I don't anticipate that to be true. Um, but for example, there's the, or, the ordinance. Not to get into the ordinance, I want to stay germane to this agenda item, but the ordinance has three sections, definitions, prohibitions, and exceptions. Um, so for example, there's an exception saying, we're not prohibiting cameras in the parking garage, which I think is reasonable. But perhaps other exceptions are reasonable too. So I could see good amendments going on in the ordinance, but if, if it went away that I didn't feel was a good law, then I would ultimately vote against it. Meaning. This is another opportunity for public discussion. The resolution is for now. The ordinance is to codify principles for the future, a much longer process, and actually another opportunity for more discussion. So, you know, whether or not you're voting for or against it, I actually think they complement each other. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. I think it's just more opportunity for discussion. So that's why I would suggest we move forward uh, with both of them today, knowing they will go to legislative matters. And and so just so you know, people know where we're at, we're still discussing, and the motion was, was a little long for, I don't but, 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 I'm going to shorten it, I'm going to say, to take, it should take a few months. The motion was to take a few months. To take a, to take a few months and, and with a specific plan, study the issue carefully and deliberate before coming back with resolution. And that was seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Is there any further discussion on that, Madam? Yeah, to the motion, I agree with Councilor LaBarge. Uh, when she, I, I think she indicated that um, we can go through this process <coughs> of other matters that come before the council, and the chair indicated something similar. I think it's, you know, there are so many opportunities for discussion. That I'm not worried about lack. There's one thing I'm not worried about. It's hearing from people on this issue. Uh, <laughs> and frankly, it's one of the issues that most of the things we vote on in the council are unanimous. I actually am grateful for the debate and, and the lack of unanimity on this. Uh, I think that's a healthy process. And we'll continue to do the council with the chief of police and the mayor. So I support just having to go through the regular process. I don't want to delay it. So I would vote no on the motion. Okay, well, when I ask, I'll, I'll ask if there's any further discussion before I ask for that vote. Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Aye. No. Okay, so we move on that motion, if you don't mind noting that, Councillor. Thank you. Of course. Um, the next item then is the resolution itself. So. Folks have copies of that, and I guess I will refer at this point to the resolution sponsor. Would you like me to make a motion, or are you? Uh, you could actually make the motion, okay. and then, okay. I move a positive recommendation for this resolution. Is there a second? Okay, second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> For positive to be sent to the council with a positive recommendation. To be sent to legislative matters. Well, we we actually we send it, yeah, by way of legislative matters. Okay, so um, I guess uh, typically the resolution sponsor would uh, introduce, and then if there are questions, I think, uh, Chief, thank you for being here. But if there are questions related to this for the chief. Direct those to her. Would you like me just to read it or just discuss it? Um, I don't know that we need a rereading. Okay. We, we read it at council. Oh, okay. So, I mean, if folks w would like a rereading. No? Okay. okay. 
Um, just brief introduction. Um, my views may be different from many of those who came to support it. Um, I think there are times and places where judicious use of surveillance technology are totally warranted. For example, around the United States Capitol building, Copley Square, when they have the Boston Marathon every year. And actually, I do support having cameras that are temporary around first night and the Pride Parade and other large gatherings because I think they serve a legitimate public safety um, role. Um, what this resolution focuses on exclusively are not temporary cameras, but permanent ones um, that are in fixed locations <coughs> downtown. And so other, other things we may discuss tonight, there's a, a sting, for example, well, there was a sting, for example, conducted by the Northampton Police Department in partnership with others in Florence related to human trafficking. I wouldn't anticipate that this resolution has anything to do with that. Or the fires in Ward 3 a couple of years ago, temporary cameras to monitor that situation. I wouldn't think this resolution discusses that. This is only uh, saying no to permanent <coughs> surveillance cameras that are municipally operated, installed in the central business district downtown and not the ones that already exist, like the one on Center Street with the police department or the one in the parking garage, but new ones. So it's very narrow. It says no to more surveillance cameras downtown. Questions, Councilor? Councilor, any questions? Um, well, I, 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 or I, discussion? I, I'd certainly like to get the police chief uh, Answer, answer some, some, some questions that came up earlier, um, um, but also in a, in, a, in a more general way. Um, I, was, I, I was curious, having, <coughs> having digested feedback that you received at the senior center meeting, and if you otherwise, I assume we're not the only ones that you paid your phone call email. Um, I, I was just curious, having, having, having heard all that, um, what your thoughts were on, on, on perhaps a, a refined approach to, to uh, a proposal for judicious use of, of, of cameras. Right. Well, thank you for inviting me to sit and, and thank you everyone for their comments. It, it really was a topic that I wanted to hear from the community. That's why we brought it forward and I wanted to hear what people had to say about it because, you know, I think we all sit in this community and, and look Can at it. Can you speak louder, please? Yes. I think we all sit in this community and we have uh, different lenses that we use to, to view our own experiences here. So we look at Northampton different ways, you know, and certainly being a police officer here for 20 years, I look at it one way and you all have your own experiences. You know, everyone in this room has their own experiences. So the way we look at the community really differs, you know, and, and it's great. It's good. Um, and that's why I wanted other opinions so that we could all look through those different lenses kind of together. Um, so I've taken a lot of the feedback that I've heard. Now, I think the one that is most concerning for me, as I said at the community discussion, was the issue of um, access to any footage that we had by outside agencies. And I think that's a really legitimate concern. Uh, we're, we're a sanctuary city. All the city leadership supports that, and it's an important aspect of who we are as Northampton. Um, so to me, that was very concerning. And if this footage falls under the Freedom of Information Act, it would be releasable, much like body camera footage would be as well. Uh, anything that we record, you know, could be releasable. Um, so I ha I'm working on that to see if there are exemptions. To, I'm, I'm talking to other communities to find out what has happened, how other federal, you know, have federal agencies reached out to them, um, have they had to give it, or have they been able to protect it through exemptions under the public records law? It's a really good question. I think it's the most important question probably that we're all thinking because the, the outside access issue to me is the biggest thing, um, sitting right next to uh, privacy and the chilling effect. And, and Council President Dwight brought up, um, you know, this chilling effect. And, and I've you know, been reading about this and talking about it and certainly listening to a lot of the comments tonight. A lot of conversation about people feeling that chilling effect. Um, I don't feel it, but that's okay because I have my lens and everyone has their own. So I understand that some people feel it. I, I, took the time to stop and chat with, with the council president to better understand that and to hear more about that. And I've been listening tonight to people's thoughts on it too. So I, I believe that's a thing. That's really a thing, that people feel a chilling effect. Um, 
and that's certainly not my intent. And as the police chief, my goal is to, to yes, stop and you know prevent and solve crime, but also uh, contribute to the quality of life. I mean, that's in our mission statement is ensuring a really good quality of life for everyone. People who have to live on the streets, people who live in homes, people who are visitors, people who are business uh, owners and workers. And so my responsibility is all those things. It's quality of life, it's public safety uh, mixed together. So when I heard about privacy and started thinking about it, I did think about, well, you know, what we had been looking at originally as far as areas we might cover, which really hasn't been discussed at all in any of these discussions. There's been a lot of assumptions about the things we're going to do with these cameras, and it's just, it's really far off from what the actual plan is, but we haven't talked about the plan. So I get why when you leave a gap in knowledge, people fill it in with things. <laughs> um, so. You know, at this point, I think taking into consideration privacy, um, we wouldn't have an intent to cover, you know, as much sidewalk as we had kind of been looking to kind of let people have their ice cream and conversations on the sidewalk. And we'd probably want to focus more on the traffic intersections. Um, for us, the traffic intersections are areas where we've been very successful at, um, you know, solving crimes. And, and when you solve a crime, hopefully you ideally prevent another one from occurring. Um, and that's the way that works, is just the way we use cameras now, when cameras already exist now that are not ours, we don't have any in Florence, I don't know what they are up there, but they're not ours. Um, how we do it now is if we have a crime occur and we get a description of a vehicle or a person, we go back in time and we look for that and then we try to work on the case. Um, so that's, that would be the best application uh, that I can think, taking into account all the really thoughtful feedback that people have shared. So for me, yes, absolutely. The, the original plan on, on what we were thinking about has definitely morphed a bit, taking into consideration um, all, all the different feedbacks that we've heard. I still have to stand behind cameras because I know that they work. Um, I don't, you, you can look at a lot of other communities, it's really hard to compare apples to apples because we wouldn't have an active monitor. So a lot of the success cities that you've seen out there, they have someone sitting and monitoring a, a camera live or watching the screens. We're not proposing that. We never were. We don't have the staff for that. That's not a uh, anything we would do. Um, so we would be really looking for more back in time, just as we are now. But it would it, now it's private footage that we're seeking out, although it doesn't cover all the areas that we're often hoping for. Um, so also when you talk about the negative impact on marginalized communities, you most, you most see that, and when you look at the research, you see that in active monitoring. Because in active monitoring, you have a person sitting watching screens, and they may be impacted by a person's appearance versus their behavior. So we, we don't have anyone active monitoring. We don't plan to treat anyone any differently than we do now. You know, our, our folks who are out having to panhandle on the streets much like uh, someone spoke and said they know their names, so do I. I stop and chat with them as do many of our officers, you know, and we help them with a lot of the struggles that they have. And I, I know we, everyone in this room, I've heard a lot of people talk about help that you've provided too. So we're kind of all on the same team here. We're not looking to uh, any, in any way negatively impact uh, members of our community who are most at risk already. Um, and the cameras that we have already have never been used for that, and that's certainly not the way any proposed system would operate. So we're really just kind of looking at putting in a few cameras in a centralized location where we think it would help us to solve and prevent crimes uh, of that nature. So I don't know if that addressed any questions you might have had. Ashley? Yes. Um, Chief, I know at that point when we had our first meeting, you had suggested that counselors email you of any concerns or questions. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for replying back to me a couple of times. I still have some concerns here um, in regards to our sanctuary city and the cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had asked you about um, some of the concerns that were brought up at the community meeting in reference to immigration, targeting, marginalized communities, and federal access can be addressed through a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel good about that, but that effort, you also said that you could easily write into your policy mm -hmm that federal agencies shall not have access to our system 
to live monitor any area in our city for any non-criminal matters. Can you explain that? Right, so there's a, a question kind of of what kind of access can outside federal agencies have? And I think one concern may be, I think there's many concerns, but one of the concerns may be that federal agents could somehow come into our station and actively use our system and kind of take it over and try to watch people with it. Um, they, that could be written in. We have protection to control our system and who we let into our building and all those sorts of things. It's the recorded footage that I think is uh, something that has come up quite a bit. Now, I have spoken with, with many other you know, police officers in, in the Commonwealth. I was just out at a chief's training last week. And many communities have cameras, and no one reported any doors being knocked on by federal agents. Not to say it can't happen. We're all watching the news and see the way our world is going. So I'm definitely very respectful of that. Um, and that's why I reached out to the Boston Public Records Office to talk to them about access to recordings. And so that's something I cannot answer for you definitely right now. And one of the issues that probably if we had some more time, it's not as easy as you would think. You call, I called the office, and they there's not a yes or no answer to it. So really what I want to do is look at other communities that may have had public records inquiries and whether or not they were able to deny those public records. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the federal agency access, that, that's everybody's hot button. Mm -hmm. I worry about it too. Me too. Um, right now, uh, we, ha we have we have cameras in, in, in the garage, we, as, as, everyone's, as everyone knows, for events like First Night uh, Pride, uh, there's, 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 there's keeping it. Um, if the feds came knocking now, mm -hmm. based on the, the, our existing camera, our, long, our long-standing cameras, uh, would the answer be any different now than uh, new cameras at intersections? Is it the same issue now as it would be? So, it, so to the extent that there's an issue, we already have it. If there's an issue, we already have it. It's yeah. simply a matter of whether or not outside agencies, it, it's not even outside agencies, because it's just a matter of whether or not recorded camera footage of, a, of, no, of nothing, no you know, criminal event, can be given out to members of the public. That's what the question is. Um, and, and there is an exemption into the public records law that has to do with kind of security of buildings and things that it could fall under. But I can't answer it with certainty until I, I want to be able to see a city or a town that had an inquiry and denied that and that was backed by the Boston office. But aren't those two separate issues? The, the, the Freedom of Information Act from a, from a, from a citizen or a journalist versus a, a federal law enforcement no, there, basically, it's really basically not. Basically Unless, the, same, the, same the only thing. difference would be is if the federal agency had a subpoena. So and obviously a member of the public wouldn't have that. So in a subpoena, then I can't, uh, freedom of information is out the window anyway. That's, someone else mentioned that. If it's a private camera that's owned by a business, if there's a subpoena, you, you have to turn it over. Uh, but that would be in a, you know, if there was a criminal event. Any other questions for the chief? Or a discussion about the, the matter? Just in general, I, I want to avoid, uh, I mean, technically, it sounds like an inflammatory term, but it's really not. I mean, it's, it's, it's called a red herring. Um, that's just what it's called. You know, when you say that one problem isn't a problem because we already have other problems. Right. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's not like it's not legitimate to ask, but I want to. I just want to be clear about that. I mean, because I've heard from people I really respect, they say the horse out of the barn on this one um, because people have cameras and there's lots of surveillance already. But I want to make clear that our our choice is not about private surveillance; it's about what the city does. So I think that's acknowledged. But I wanted to make that I wanted to make that clear, and I do agree that it's. I, I'm concerned that there's no answer about whether the federal, to what extent the federal government can access the, the video, although I suspect they can. I don't want to make claims that I can't substantiate. But I think at the end of the day, I would err on the side of thinking they could. Um, so until I know absolutely they can't, and that kind of protection is enshrined at a, a very high level, I would still have that concern. I think others would have that concern. So. Okay, is there any further discussion? 
Okay, I will ask then if there is uh, uh, all those in favor of the resolution opposing the installation of municipally um, operated surveillance technology downtown. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay. Okay, that motion carries. The resolution will now move forward to the uh, Committee on Legislative Matters. And now we're going to take up the ordinance as the next item of business. So um, I guess similarly, uh, Councillor, as the ordinance sponsor, I'll ask if you have anything to introduce. Sure. Of course. Um, this. Um, this would create a new section um, under the streets, sidewalks, and public property chapter, chapter 285. I think I would like to read it. I think that would be the most easy way to explain it, if that's okay with the chair. Um, so it would create section 285-52 surveillance technology as three parts. The first is definitions. Uh, for the purposes of this section, surveillance technology means- Ladder, please. Sure. Um, First part is definitions. Uh, for the purpose of this section, surveillance technology means hardware or software that records and or transmits data for the purpose of observing and or reporting the identity, movement, or actions of individuals or vehicles within the public way, including but not limited to video cameras, license plate readers, facial recognition systems, and mobile phone location readers. Section B, prohibition within the central business district, surveillance technology shall not be deployed and or operated in a fixed location on public property or property leased and or controlled by the city for a period of more than one day. Section C, <coughs> exceptions, this section shall not apply to public property that is part of the municipal parking system. So it just attempts to say that it's a prohibition on, on fixed cameras downtown. I would note that it's an ordinance. It will be passed, if at all, by a majority of the city council, and it could be amended in the future by a majority of the city council. Um, my intention is just to provide a, an additional check. We, of course, if we appropriate the money, the council would have to vote on the money, but I like the idea that um, future mayors, I like, I like talking about future mayors and future chiefs of police, it's actually, it's actually good that we have such an outstanding chief of police today and a good mayor, an outstanding mayor today, because it, it shows us that one of these days we're not gonna have such good public servants. And so the purpose of this ordinance is for the future. It's, it's the policy we want going forward. That's the intent. Um, but what I want is for a future mayor to not roll out of bed and say, I wanna put a surveillance camera there and be able to do that uh, unless the city council votes yes. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to fund things. I mean, you could do it presumably with ICE. Maybe I'm just wrong, but I imagine you could find a way to do it with existing funds. So I'd like to just um, enshrine this in law so that provide that check. Think of it as a check. I mean, it's a prohibition, but it could be modified. It's more a check on the executive, which I think is important in, in our global democracy. <coughs> I've talked for too long. Thank you. Any other discussion? Oh, actually, I'm not sure that we actually made, did you oh, make the motion? I didn't, I'll move a positive recommend. Actually, you know what? I'll move a neutral recommendation. I'm um, just going to say. Yeah, because I think this is a complex one that will definitely get more discussion in the Legislative Matters Committee. We need more input from the Chief of Police on this and, and the community. Um, so I think this will be a longer one, so I'd be happy to move that. So that's moved as a neutral recommendation. And I'll second that. Any further discussion on this? Yes. Along the lines of, of it being a, a, a neutral recommendation because it, it is complicated, can I just ask why you would not consider, uh, as one of the sponsors, um, tabling the measure to allow time to learn from the conversations that hopefully we're going to still be having in the, in, in the weeks ahead. As I understand it, this is an ordinance that was drafted within a matter of days 
of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the chief opening up this community conversation. And it just seems to me that if we were to take our time and learn a little bit more and hear more from the chief, for example, about whether this has, would have any impact on existing uh, you know, investigative activity, which is one of the questions I, I want to ask the chief. I, 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 just, I just wonder what, what is the advantage uh, to, the way I see it, rushing to act on an ordinance now as opposed to acting on, uh, on an ordinance that might take a slightly different shape based on what we've learned in the, in the, in the, in the weeks ahead. Why, why, why not uh, delay a little bit? Given that the conversation has, has really just begun, that as we've heard, the, the earliest this would move from hypothetical to real would be as part of a capital budget coming our way in February or March, many months away. What, what, is the, what is the argument for acting on it now as opposed to waiting until there's been a chance for further deliberation and further, further input? Given that there's there's no gun at our head, so to speak, that's telling us, hey, this is a pressing matter, and we have to act on it now. Why, why, why not table it and benefit from further conversation? Happy to answer that, those uh, questions. Uh, please. Through you, Madam Chair. Um, I think that, I guess I don't accept the premise that it's pushing it through. Um, I'll just tell you, I mean, I, I heard about this through rumor, the, the idea of having cameras downtown through rumor, rumor through a downtown business owner months ago. So it's not like I wrote it on, on, the, on the walk over here or something, right? It's something I've done, and I appreciate the concern that I might have, but I, I did a lot of research and looked into this. Um, there's one thing about this debate that's puzzled me, that somehow if you're in favor of something like this, that you, you must not have done careful research. Um, yeah. I have, and I acknowledge that there's more uh, research that can be identified as helpful in crafting the ultimate form. I just think we should move forward, and the nature of the process is going to be slow anyway. I mean, this is going to go to legislative matters. We're going to hear from Chief Casper in that form as well. I guess I don't believe that table and tabling. You mean continuing, right? It's tabling. Tabling is a, is a different thing. Um, but I, I would like to move forward with the discussion. And tabling seems almost like a suspension of discussion. Whereas if you go forward, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, it might be boring for future, you know, if you show up to future meetings, you, your eyes might start to glaze over because we're gonna start to talk about, um, you know, the exact definition of surveillance technology. We're gonna look at the ordinance that Cambridge was, was proposed, had, uh, uh, did propose the ordinances from other communities and this can be discussion. So I say, Maybe we agree. After all that, maybe we agree that actually discussion is important, but the way to do that is to move forward as opposed to suspend the discussion. Okay. Uh, Councilor? Yes. Um, I have to agree with Councilor Ryan O'Donnell. Um, seeing how we have moved many resolutions, I mean, um, ordinances to legislative matters, they have had several open public hearings. I mean, they just didn't have one meeting. They invited whoever the breakdown was for business people or whoever. So I don't think that you would find it going to legislative matters and saying, you know, and make a vote that night because I'm hoping that's not what's going to happen here. And I agree that with Chief Casper, there are questions for a good debate. And I think the research is very, very valuable. And I want to hear about the research on Holyoke, East Stanton, and Amherst. That's important to me. So, and I still feel from the time that we had that meeting at the Senior Center, some of that I was hoping tonight that we would have heard from the chief of exactly about the research to be taken. And um, I do not have a problem of moving this ordinance to legislative matters um, with the understanding I'm hoping, which I agree with um, Councilor Bidwell, <coughs> that something like this, especially going into legislative matters, should not be rushed. 
I think there should be some really good open public hearings for all involved, the business people, the chamber, right down the line. Okay, any further discussion on this? Yes, Council. Um, well, since it, since it's come up repeatedly, I, I don't know if you were prepared to, to offer any any anything that you learned from as it's uh, as it's come up several times now. Mm -hmm. Amherst Holyoke East Hampton. Mm -hmm. Is there is there information that you've learned from the chiefs there or otherwise that? Uh, would, would, would add to our conversation tonight? Most of the research that I have is from the uh, national cities around the country, so Baltimore, D.C., Chicago, because those are the really big uh, studies that we've done on surveillance technology and the impacts. But I, I'm still, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that that's apples to apples, and that's my concern. To be honest with you, they're all incredibly supportive of it and say that numbers go down. But I don't know that we would have that impact here if we limited the cameras to where we're talking about limiting to, which I think we may want to do to balance out privacy. So, like I said in the community discussion, I can provide data, sure, <laughs> that shows that crime drops and, uh, you know, it goes up initially because you have cameras and more things are detected and then it goes down. There's displacement for some activities like narcotics transactions move out to surrounding areas. Um, other activity, uh, property crimes, yes. Um, assaults, yes. Those things decrease in areas that are covered by surveillance. But those are, a lot of those studies include active monitoring, which we're not having. So like, it's, it's, it's very hard to find a like city with the, what we're offering, which is a, a passive monitor, meaning no one's sitting there really watching it. Um, to find that kind of comparative data. So I'm hesitant to introduce data because I could give you this whole thing and tell you that, yeah, there's data out there that says the cameras work, but that's, those aren't, that's not the same system we're looking at. Um, and I've talked to my surrounding communities and they have used it to, they're not really tracking data with it necessarily, but they can anecdotally tell me about crimes they've solved with it, which is the same thing I'm telling you that we would use it for. And what I can tell you already is that here in our community, we use cameras frequently, and they're extremely helpful in solving crime. We have an investigation going on right now, and we just pulled up footage that we got um, from a private entity, and we're, we're going to be able to solve it. So that's why we're solving that crime. So like, that's how I see it working here. I don't need to look very far outside of North Tampa. We're kind of a unique community. It's a unique proposal that we have with a very small area that we're looking to cover with cameras. So I can see how they would work because I've worked in this community for 20 years and I can tell you how many times we've used cameras, you know, just a lot. And I can tell you how many times we've been like, ah, you know, if only we had had them, they covered this area where we know someone did, and it doesn't always occur in downtown. So it, it, it's not that maybe what we're trying to solve by using cameras in those main traffic intersections are things that necessarily even occurred downtown. They may have, but when you have robberies or whatever on King Street or domestic or whatever you have, then the person drives for interesting. That's how it's used. So it's not just limited to, uh, you know, crimes that are occurring in our downtown area. So by limiting the camera system, though, to a really small area like that and not covering sidewalks, you're going to reduce the effectiveness of the cameras. But I think that that may be something that we're willing to say that's that's okay because we value privacy, um, you know, more than the effectiveness on some things. So it's hard for me to know what what data to present to make you understand that cameras are useful. Uh, because to me, the most relevant data is right inside the Northampton Police Department and how many cases we already have where we use cameras. And the one we just are investigating today that has one. We got hit with a rash of crimes last night with shoplifting all up and down Main Street. And I know what there's, you know, it's not just about shoplifting, but it was a lot of theft left last night. Something like nine shops or something. One duo was working. People come into our community and they steal from our community. And they also steal people's pocketbooks and wallets and bicycles that are locked, that are, you know. Um, so it's all those things. And <coughs> this, this is a reality of it. Luckily, last night, one of our awesome bike officers went up on the bike path and happened to stop the two suspects. Had he not done that, it would have been very challenging. But, we, you know, we did have some video footage from inside some of the businesses. So that's, that's the data that I need. I, I know how we use cameras. So we can look outside, but I don't think it's going to be the most relevant data to present. As much as I'd love to come here and have you read through this, it's a great read. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the reality. It, it does work, but not probably the way we're going to use it. We're going to use it a little differently, bearing in mind all the good thoughts of many of the folks here, uh, trying to balance out those things that we've talked about. So, 
Cameras are very effective for me to see frequently. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, we just, just, I know this goes without saying, but you'll be answering, I mean, you know, you'll be, go well, likely be asked to also come to legislative matters where there's not an entirely different group of four, Marcel Don was also on that committee, but um, then you will have had uh, a number of meetings between the forum that you held, um, tonight's meeting, and then at least another three to bring up, to bring up, well, just to make sure that um, uh, any concerns or any uh, implications for the police department would, would be able to be addressed or touched upon. Um, is there further uh, discussion? Yes. Um, we, it, it, it's easy to to talk about community policing versus cameras and spend your money on one or the other. And we, we, we hear some of that trade off in, in the conversation. Uh, could, could you remind us of the extent of the so called community policing, uh, the, the, the dedicated downtown? Uh, police on, on, on foot, on, on bikes, to just to just give us a flavor of the, the coverage that we, that, we, that we do have? I was surprised to hear the uh, feedback in the first meeting about you should use community policing to solve crimes and not cameras. Uh, because we are a community that I think sets the standard for community policing philosophy and how we do our jobs. Um, and our officers do incredible things that I could share with you about the above and beyond, you know, reaching into their own pockets, their own homes, opening it to people. I mean, our officers do amazing things that no one ever knows anything about because that's the nature of this job, or, or we don't go out and you know share all those things that we do. Um, but it's not like cameras, if we put cameras in, all the police officers are going to disappear and tied to some building and just sit and watch people. I mean, but the signs, I love the signs that say, watch, see, watch, see us, don't watch us. I love that sentiment. We do do that. Our, I, would, I mean, our officers are just out on the street all the time, having conversations, driving people to rehab, trying to get them connected to housing because winter's coming. And like, you're worried about people out on the streets, we're worried about people who, I, I go home in January on a negative whatever four degree night, and I worry about the people that I know that live on the streets in boxes behind buildings, and I worry about them. So my whole department does, you know, we're, we're that kind of department and we've invested a lot of time and energy. We have our community outreach officers downtown. We have our DART program that officers go and track people down who have overdosed and they try to hook them up to services. We just had an overdose yesterday. The officer was at the, at the person's side within half an hour trying to get them help, you know. Uh, I mean, we have the SRO programs, we have police day, we have fishing, we have a ton of stuff. We, you know, the trading card program came out. I mean. We spend a lot of time out, outreach to our community, offering the Citizen Police Academy, um, trying to be transparent, open, good listeners. You know, this process that we're going through here, I think is, is demonstrative of our community policing philosophy. You know, we, I truly want to hear the feedback of, of our community, and I truly want to collaborate with everyone at this table and in this room to see what, what might work best for our community. So I think our department is absolutely the gold standard for community policing. And I see cameras and community policing uh, partners and not in conflict with each other. If cameras go up, that doesn't mean that you see less of us or that we stop caring about the people in our community in any way and stop building those relationships. For the record, which I'm currently taking, so I'll just write this down as I talk. Um, I think you do do an outstanding job with community policing. That deserves to be recognized, <coughs> and I hope we can build on, on that. Um, I still oppose the surveillance cameras, obviously, but I think I'd be remiss if I didn't join with others in recognizing all the work that uh, the Northampton Police Department does under the leadership. So, thank you. Okay, Marshall, anything further? Okay, we'll move on to so I recommend that we have a motion on the floor for a neutral recommendation to send it forward to legislative matters for more conversation. And I would like to... Well, the more. counselor still has out of it. Oh, you ready? I still have one, 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 one. Oh, one oh. more question. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I guess it's not so much a question as a comment, as if, if, if in fact we're, 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 we're headed towards a vote here. Um, part of the, what, what, what I'm hearing is, it's, it's, it's okay for us to, uh, in, the, in the first time that this committee has, has, has taken up this topic for debate, to go, to, to go ahead and vote, because rest assured, it's going to legislative affairs, and that's where there will be other questions. But this was referred to us, you know, we talk about the importance of there being a legislative function uh, as distinct from the executive and judiciary. Well, within the legislative function, we have our job to do as a committee. And our job is not to say, well, we have a lot of questions, but let's assume that those get addressed and answered in legislative affairs. I still think we've just, we've just scratched the surface of, of the learning that I need to do before I feel comfortable taking, taking a vote on this. Um, and I, I, would, I would like further conversation, not the, we're not gonna get to it all tonight, uh, with the chief, there there are questions. There's been questions that, that have been raised about. Well, it, it's it's very there's a there's a big capital cost and there's an ongoing operating cost and we can't we can't afford it or we should be using those dollars for other things. Well, I'd like to hear a, a, the chief's response to that and to, and to better understand that because I've also heard the explanation that if the cameras at intersections can actually. Uh, yes, there is some cost there, but, but there's also some savings in personnel. You can accomplish things with, with cameras in terms of crime solving uh, that take the place of, 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 of uh, uh, undercover plainclothes cops. I'd, like, I'd just like to understand that a little bit better. That's one of many things that I would like to understand better. So I, I, I don't buy the argument that Yes, there's a lot of things we don't know, but that's all right. Trust legislative affairs to ask those questions. No, it's our job as this committee to to ask those questions and, and to and uh, and to bring in bring in the answers. And and I don't believe we've had time to do that in 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 the scope of things. Relatively brief conversation tonight. Um, and, and 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 so. Uh, if this is, is if this is moving towards a vote, I wouldn't even vote it as a neutral recommendation because uh, I don't think we have done our job yet as a as a, as a as a committee. Legislative affairs can can look at anything they want, but but it came to this committee because we're the city service the city services committee, and we're expected to really dig in on these issues. And as far as I'm concerned, we've just barely begun to dig. And there is no rush. There's, there, I, I haven't heard an answer to the question, why now, as opposed to two months or three months from now. Uh, and, and it's not a sufficient answer to say, well, some of that two or three months will be taken up by other committees looking at it. No, it's our job as, as City Services Committee to, to really dig in on this question. And we've not had time to do that. So I don't believe it should, it should, it should leave this committee at all, which I guess is saying I think it should be um, uh, continued here in this in this committee uh, and that we plan out at least one other meeting perhaps more where we really do get to the bottom of, of some of the, some of the other questions that we're certainly not going to get to in that point is well taken um, but the motion on the floor is to send it with a neutral recommendation to the full council so is there any more on that on whether to send it with a neutral recommendation? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay. All right, that motion carries. Um, we're going to take a five minute break before we come back for our appointments. Thank you. Sorry, get hurt again. You're not trying to leave, are you? We don't have to sit around for our Sorry, Sorry, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 No way. Now we see the clerk. Yes. Oh, high five. Woo! <laughs> 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 for the. Um, we 
so tired, oh my god. I know they told me. They were like, I did something bad. I was like, 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 I was that's what Sarah said. Okay. She just goes on list of like, I don't, I don't know. But the fact is that it's really important. Are they like not talking about you now? Yeah. All right. There's no money. It's like a funny one. You're not. Bob, you should be. So I mean, all the talk about my kids. Not even the men. I think basically, they're not, they're not quite. That doesn't stop us though from going home tonight and being right? And I understand that. So, we're going to study anything we want. My problem is that this was yeah. oh, a rapid form where we coach someone to take out a coach and then we don't deliver it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And he's also talking about members of a majority of the members. It doesn't matter. We did discuss it. Lida wants to. Lida loses the two. There you can walk, of course. Walk home if you were. All right. Well played. I'm that well, I actually get nervous when I have to stand up to talk here. It's weird sitting there, I'm nervous. I stand at the podium. I'm more than one stand over there. Interesting. And there were people on the other side who were yeah. supporting, you know, semi supporting the data says this is wrong. And we lost the argument at that point because the point was he's morally wrong. It's morally wrong. We're making moral choices. And the fact that we're talking about data that's going to support eroding a moral choice, that's, that, I figured the topic of the debate, we've already, we're actually just trying to stem a tie. We're trying to resist a tie. And so the moral argument got lost some time ago. And I don't want to contribute to that disintegration of that moral argument. The longer we can sustain it. So that's why historical context. Yeah. Are you in charge of those? Uh, now. <laughs> you pulled the short straw? I don't know. I don't know. He, he offered oh. so I just oh. <laughs> He's been in blood so long. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. So, and then I think that the more more important the right kind of is actually this is unique, this is isolated, this is not part of a systemic issue. Before I get the blame about it, about the you guys is it's just sort of reinforces what it is. But it was so cool to see everyone we've been meeting with like stand up. <laughs> I think you don't want to mind. Right now, there's stuff just going on. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So like, what's going on? Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. It's a, you know, I don't know if I'm getting my door knocking. No, no. Leave my door out of this. Access point. And the bread is just out of the hundred yards. I know you're like, I'm sorry you walked down the street. Like, let's, let's not deny. No, I don't deny. I'm not denying that. You know, what did you do? Wow. I know, you know, like, who you walked with. Do they use that? Little by little. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? Because it's actually a fresh. But it takes away your rights and your civil rights. Yeah. Little by little by little. Wow. And then all of a sudden and there's a very big disaster that, like that they can say, oh, temporarily, like, we are going to put more cameras and they all stay there. Like, so let's say it does this uh, first time. Do you know, like, down the side streets. Are we then going to say, let's put cameras there too? And then are we going to have on um, okay. right here on the police? That's I, I don't know what the budget is. So a stingray is a, a, is a fake cell phone. Um, so okay. that um, has a short range. Uh, why would we need riot police? And your phone would be like, oh, oh it's a cell phone tower. I'm going to ask you all the cops and that got to the major big city towers. Oh, oh, so to to be contentious. Thank you for listening. Please continue. Yes. And all of the cellular data as well. Wow. Just wholesale numbers. Paul, you know, that he would say that how did that appear? That's exactly what everyone is Okay, we're gonna continue on with our meeting, folks. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll ask if there is a motion to um, approve the previous meeting minutes. Move to approve. Second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll abstain because I was Okay. You can note that. I gotta get my stuff in order. Okay. okay. And then we have um, a number of appointments to the Whiting Street <coughs> Fund. Yeah. So, uh, Councilor the Barge. Yes. Um, I had talked with Joe Mastercha on the phone and um, knowing that he was on the Board of Elmers before, um, since 2011, he did send me an email. Um, I'm writing a response to request for an interview regarding my application to be a member of the Whiting Street Fund Committee. I have been a member of the Board of Elmers since December 1st, 2011. At that time, I stated that my experiences in the North Vietnam School Department had helped me have empathy for citizens who are struggling financially, applicants for the free and reduced lunch program, <coughs> students needing assistance to pay to play after school athletics, and families looking for help to pay the school bus transportation fee. In this capacity, I believe that I was fair and respectful of confidentiality as well as the sensitive nature of personal financial information. With the reorganization of the Board of Elmers to the Whiting Street Fund Committee, I believe that my experience in the North Dayton School Department as Associate Superintendent with budgetary oversight would allow me to successfully interview, select, and evaluate agencies which would be given the task of distributing the funds of the trust. And thank you for considering me <coughs> in this position. So I make a um, positive recommendation. Okay, that's a motion for a positive recommendation on Joseph Mesterker. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion about Mr. Mesterker? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, please aye. say aye. Aye. <coughs> okay, that motion carries. Um, I will note that I spoke with uh, Andrea Murray, um, who uh, also was on the Board of Auditors prior to the Whiting Street Fund Committee, uh, well, prior to her nomination now for this. So in many ways, it's a transition of that Board of Auditors to a new fund and uh, a new committee. <clears throat> but um, Ms. Murray um, would very much like to continue on. She's been 12 years since 2005 serving on the Board of Auditors and um, wants to continue on with this committee and its new uh, iteration. 
So I will move a positive recommendation. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I know I'm not supposed to move that, but fix that. Yeah, right. All right. It'll get fixed in the minutes. All right. So, Councillor Goodball? Yes, I spoke with Mike Shaughnessy. He says he's been on the Board of Almonds for 30 years. That, that's, a, that's a long stint. And yes, he looks forward to making the transition um, as well to the uh, to the Whiting Street Fund. Clearly qualified, I would move a positive recommendation. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I will abstain because Mr. Shaughnessy is my campaign treasurer. I don't believe there's a financial interest, but uh, yes. abundance of caution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. And one abstention. Okay. Then that brings us to Michael Quinlan. Yeah. Um, well, Mr. Quinlan is actually here today. Um, and we spoke on the phone. Um, and I think we have someone who's um, very interested in getting involved in the city of Northampton, cares a lot about the city of Northampton. And so I would make a positive recommendation uh, to start off with. And I would, if the chair agrees, we could certainly invite Mr. Quillen to speak if he wishes. Okay, so move to send with a positive recommendation to the full council. Second. second. And seconded. Okay. And Mr. Quinlan, would you like to speak? Are you certainly not Just required to? Tell you, tell you quickly, I'm Michael Quinlan, I live at 712 Bridge Road. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to, to speak here. Thank you for the wonderful conversation on the phone. Uh, I've lived in Northampton since, well, from 1975 till uh, 2000, and uh, I guess it was 1998. Or nine, and then uh, back in 2003, and we've lived here since. Uh, I went to Northampton Public Schools. My children did. The range of people that we've met here has been just amazing, and uh, I think that you know brings a, a certain perspective to uh, being a part of, of the Wedding Street Fund Committee. And I thank you very much for considering. That. Thank you for taking the time to, to actually come and present yourself in person. I appreciate it. Have you been here all night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Special commendation. <laughs> then all those in favor of a positive recommendation say aye. 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 Any opposed? No abstentions. That carries. And then we have uh, to the Council on Aging. Yeah, no, we have Marilyn. Marilyn Richards. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marilyn mm -hmm. Richards. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I talked with uh, Marilyn Richards and she um, emailed me so I could read it off. After having been involved with the city as a city councilor and on the planning board in past years, I would look forward to serving on the newly established Whiting Fund Committee. <coughs> My desire is to return to active engagement in local government issues. I have worked in nonprofit management for the last 40 years. I am experienced in grant writing grant review, process, fundraising, and financial management, and other aspects of nonprofit management. Currently, I sit on the Kendall Corporation National Board and am vice chairperson of the Kendall Charitable Funds in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. As a board member of the Charitable Funds Board, we distribute funds to our affiliated organizations as well as other two non-affiliated <coughs> nonprofits that deal with issues of aging. I hold a master's degree in organization and management and a CAGS in healthcare administration. Thank you for your consideration and I make a positive recommendation to city council. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to send with a positive recommendation. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> no abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then uh, on to the Council on Aging, and that was Casey Holland? Yes. Um, Casey was extremely um, worth talking to on the phone. I mean, even looking at her application, um, she, she has done quite a bit as far as the nursing field. Um, she put down, Dear Marianne, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to interview for a position on the council. 
please allow me to explain my reasoning for applying for this position. I'm a lifelong Northampton resident with the exception of the four years spent in the Navy as a corpsman, just as I believe in serving <clears throat> my country. I also feel the need to give back to my community. I currently serve as a president of the NHS Alumni Committee, previously on the RK Fed Ryan Road School Council, as well as various committees as a registered nurse slash nurse practitioner at the Cooley Dixon Hospital. I have elderly family. Many of my patients are aging as am I. I would like to ensure resources and services are available to these valuable population. I started my health career in a long-term care facility and have had extensive training and experience working with people throughout the lifespan. I believe this experience and may can do attitude would be an asset to the council. Respectfully, KCL Fowler. I, I make a positive recommendation to full city council. Moved with a positive recommendation and a second. second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Councilor? Um, this is uh, Jamie Alvaro Fisher. It's a reappointment to the Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, Mr. Fisher is, Alvaro Fisher has served one term on the commission, and I considered him to be a thoughtful and, and valued member of that body, so I, I would love to see him reappointed. So I would move a positive recommendation. Second. Second. Yeah, Moved and second. seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? No abstentions? Okay. And finally, the Arts Council? Yes. Alan Schneider is a theater guy. Um, Smith College Theater, he's a freelance opera guy. And he believes that there's no, not anyone representing the theater community on the Arts Council. Makes sense to me. Sounds like a good appointment. I think he'd bring a lot to the council. So I move a positive recommendation. Second. Moved and seconded to send a positive recommendation. All those <coughs> in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And no abstentions. Okay, very good. So I did send out the um, departmental presentations list, um, but I didn't bring it with me. Um, I don't have it either. Well, I sent it in the in the agenda. It was this little yeah. PDF. Oh, you don't get that if you don't do it electronically. Yeah. So um, the reason I had sent that was to see if there were um, uh, some thoughts on departmental presentations for the rest of the year, and unfortunately I don't have the list with me, so I didn't print it out, but um, originally we, we, I don't think we need to hear from the police chief, uh, so I mean, I don't know that, I mean, if there's, from my recollection, looking back over the, um, list, the ones that we haven't seen since last year, I mean, I think even sometime in May, but it must have been June, because we had the, uh, it may have been the building inspector. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody have particular? Uh, should we just see, take a wait and see approach for October? Uh, um, actually, there. Issues come up from time to time. I'm a little bit curious to talk about the building inspector. I could ask the building inspector uh, if he would come and give a departmental presentation, just an update on the department. And okay, and then we'll have whatever other uh, appointments appointments that we may get in the next couple of weeks. Okay. All right, then I will okay. do that for next time and um, ask if there is a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.